Welcome back once again. It is time for the show known as Line to Gain here on the Buffalo Rumblings Vidcast Network. I am the big O, Jerry Ostrowski. She is my sister from another mister. She is known, well, are we going to be the artist formerly known as Sarah Larson here soon? Yeah, we'll, I've just thought we'll, it is. We'll, 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 we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right. Let, let's, All just, right. let's just hang <laughs> that out there. But um, she is the artist formerly known as Sarah Larson. She's down in Miami, Florida, and we make up the tandem. That is line to gain here Wednesday nights, 9 Eastern, 8 Central on your Buffalo Rumblings Vidcast Network. Hey, if, if you're watching on uh, on X, if you're watching on Facebook, jump on over to YouTube and uh, you can chime in on the comments. If it's good, we'll put them up on the show. As always, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We got a lot of stuff going on tonight. We're going to talk about last week's game against the Cowboys. We're going to talk about the upcoming Saturday night matchup in L.A. against the Chargers. My girl's getting ready to head out to L.A. for that game. And as always, we like to start it off with, uh, you know, where's Sarah? How was her week? How was her trip? <laughs> and all that stuff. And, of course, yeah. she was in Orchard Park this past weekend for the cow for the uh, big win over the Cowboys. Sarah, how was the trip? How did everything go? It was nice. Uh, the, I mean, the weather sucked for tailgating. I, I mean, uh, luckily, I was at uh, the Mafia house. I was supposed to go down to um to to game day Buffalo or game day um the uh, experience they do a, their tailgate and everything, but it was so the the weather was so bad. I was just I was over it. Um, pretty much before heading in, as I started to head in, guess what stopped the rain. So it you know <laughs> it definitely rained on my tailgate, but um but yeah, and then it didn't start really raining again until the fourth quarter. So uh forty it was like forty five degrees for most of the day. Can't beat that in December. Um, it was it was definitely you know it was a nice it was a nice day. Uh, went out Saturday night uh, to um, to Resurgence. They had a party, a Christmas party with um, with uh, Game Day with the folks from Game Day. They brought people out from the real world and uh, the the challenge. They had like uh, six or seven people from from those shows there. So it was kind of cool. I felt like I already knew them all because I had been watching them for so many years. Um, so that was a cool, you know, cool experience to get to to see those people and bump into some people, you know, I haven't seen in a while. And, you know, I always love going home. I didn't make it to Bar Bill. It was literally the first time I've been home uh, all, all season that I did not go to Bar Bill. So um, I definitely... We'll be heading there in two weeks when I go back. <laughs> well, somebody else will be heading there in two weeks as well. And yes, that's can't this wait guy to right here. So I'll be up in Orchard Park. Uh, secured my seats last night. I oh, have nice. to say, getting five seats together with an aisle was very challenging for this game coming up. You'll have to week. text me where you're sitting. I'm sitting uh, close to you. I'm not. I'm sitting down on your end. I'm not sitting um, by the tunnel. I'm kind of down in the corner. Um, I'm actually like in the corner seats of the end zone. Um, and so I like those seats. I kind of like bleacher seats because as if you know me by the name, I'm a bit size challenged. So <laughs> I like the bleacher seats as opposed to the individual seats. Mm -hmm. So we'll be sitting down there. Uh, I'm sure we'll catch you on the tailgate. We'll come by the mafia house, mm -hmm. you know, and wherever else uh, people may be. So I'm excited about that. But, hey, what I'm really excited about is to talk about last week's game. Uh, yeah. Buffalo wins 31 to 10 over the Dallas Cowboys, a team which many felt was a Super Bowl contender, and they probably still are. Although, as I said after that game, if San Francisco does not, if they're not the representative of the Super Bowl for the NFC after what we've seen over the last few weeks, they should sell the franchise and relocate because I don't know how anybody, yeah, can the 49ers right now I in the think, NFC. I think there is, I, I, you know, it, it's hard to say, but. Detroit looks like they're going a little bit back and forth. They're regressing a little bit. I haven't been impressed with them the last couple of weeks. To be honest with you, I think the one team that's kind of doing the billsy thing is the the LA Rams. I think mm -hmm. that they're like they're they're kind of surging ahead right when it's when it's ready. So uh, you know, we'll see um how that you know plays out. But I think that the, if anyone can make a little bit of a, a postseason run, I think it'll be interesting to see if it's them. Uh, the Bills had a very offensive line friendly game. Uh, o Lyman loved the game that just happened in Orchard Park. Josh Allen, of course, if you're an Allen fan like most of us are, uh, his stats were pretty pedestrian like, if not kind of non existent. Uh, seven of 15, 94 yards. He did have a passing touchdown, he had the rushing touchdown as well. 
had 24 yards rushing as Brady continues to sprinkle him in with some design runs uh, from time to time. Of course, the star of the show, James Cook, uh, he comes out, 25 rushes, 175 yards, averaged over seven yards a carry. Um, three, uh, uh, he did have the the touchdown uh, rushing. That then he comes in and has a touchdown. The ball again. My fantasy team thanked him so much. <laughs> I was in the playoffs with both of my fantasy teams and uh, got dubs for both um, this week. So I'm happy to head into the next week. I can see. Buffalo Freddy's making comments because I'm going against him in one of my leagues next week. So, um, you know, we'll see how that all works out. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, Cook, you know, he killed it, man. So, again, Cook has 179 yards on 25 rushes. Um, Johnson had nine carries, 54 yards, and a uh, he had a wonderful game. He's been a great compliment to James Cook. Again, Josh Allen, 24 uh, rushing yards. Then you go down to receiving. Diggs, four catches, 48 yards. No touchdowns. Cook, two catches, 42 yards in the touchdown. And of course, Bass, one of one on field goals. Um, very, very good night for the Bills offensively, running the football. Defensively, uh, Johnson leads the way, seven tackles. Rapp comes in with six. Uh, thought he did a really good job filling in. Um, he did have the uh, the the unsportsmanlike or the roughing penalty. You can call it what you will. I like it. Physical- can we yeah. time out for one second? Because you said the, the magic name here, Rap. Okay. Yeah. So so today on Twitter, someone had posted, and I don't remember who it was. Um, I, I want to say it was Bruce Nolan. Um, he posted uh maybe a little bit less rap, a little bit more Cam Lewis. A couple of days ago, someone had, you know, when when Micah Hyde was out, someone was like, Can we have Hamlin start over rap? What is going on? Like, I don't see what everyone is complaining about when it comes to rap. Like, I don't see it at all. And do you see it? You just watched the all 22. No, I'm a huge fan of rap because I'm a fan of physical safeties. And I think that what he brings tackling wise physicality to the game, I will take a penalty like he had once in a blue moon, because I think it's, it's an intimidating factor. I think he comes up and sticks people. I, I personally, with the injury situation that's going on in that second in that safety area, I really have no issue with him being a starter on this team. I, I just don't. I think he he's a great complement to what they do in the back end, especially with Johnson. I like short tacklers at, at the DB spots. Um, so no, I have no problem with Rap Dotson. Uh, he added four tackles. Poyer had four. Poyer uh, Poyer played really really well. Bernard again is asserting himself. But um, just a very, very good defensive effort. And I think that, and we'll talk about it in a little bit, Sarah. I think that what McDermott is doing defensively is he's finally decided we've got some really, really good athletes up front. Our front seven is athletic as they come in the league. And he's using that athleticism to, to our advantage and doing some things up front that I think uh, these guys, you know, especially like the Ed Olivers of the world, the Greg Russo's of the world are really excelling at. Okay. I just wanted to know your opinion. Cause like I said, I've seen a couple of opinions about rap lately and I don't see it. I haven't seen it. I actually, you know, I'm looking forward to, to him probably starting a little bit more next year. Um, and then I was like, wow, am I extremely and totally wrong? Um, and haven't, you know, noticed enough. I want to, I want to say this and I'm going to go ahead and respond to Matt's to, I'm sorry, that's Roy's, Roy's comment about moving him over. I, I want to respond to Matt's point about, the rough hit on Devonte Adams in week two. I guys, I don't, I really don't have a problem with that, especially in a league right now where you see guys, especially with, with the penalty that was, I get it. It, um, it helped us, but the roughing, the, the roughing, the passer penalty on Josh Allen was a joke. It wasn't roughing, especially when Josh and we give Mahomes a lot of, a lot of flack about flopping. Josh flops as much as anybody. Josh isn't even on the ground yet, and he's throwing his arms out. And by the time he hits the ground, he's pointing at his head and looking at the official, where's the flag? Um, I don't have a problem with roughings when they are just that, when they are actually getting their money's worth for the penalty. So, yeah, you got to pick and choose. You can't have them in critical situations. But I'm telling you, there's something about that. When you have DBs that will come up and put their face mask on people, 
that's an intimidating thing, and that goes a long way as far as, as defensive play and, and trying to stop. Right. Yeah, Daryl put Hamlin, though. Uh, no, no disrespect for DeMar, but he should be a last-minute man in. I agree. That's why I was like – like he can, there cannot be a game where I have seen that rap has been worse <sighs> than DeMar. Now, mind you, DeMar has played like one or two, um, you know, uh, uh, defensive snaps and being facetious. I know he's played a, a couple more, but he hasn't played much of anything. So um, I have not seen, you know, DeMar play well this season um, when he has played, but he's been a healthy and active for most of the season. So for some people to say that he deserves to be out there more than rap just kind of really surprised me. So kind of want to hit on the point talking about this Cowboys game, Sarah, I kind of want to hit on the point that I talked about earlier with McDermott utilizing athleticism up front. And if you watch that all 22, or if you have a chance to, if you have a subscription to it, if you don't as a fan of football, you should get it because it's an awesome, awesome tool to go back on Tuesday or Wednesday. You got a little bit of time pull up your NFL plus app and watch the all 22, which is the game film that the coaches and players watch sideline and end zone. But if you watch what we're doing defensively, McDermott is really utilizing a lot of movement up front with our front linemen. Um, lots of slants, slants, uh, lining up and, and giving a look one way, slanting away from it, getting back into the defense he wants to be into by the movement of the front guys. And then a lot of times he's bringing blitzes off the outside to complement those those line stunts and those slants that they're doing up front. So I think that's given lines fits. I think we're very, very athletic. We're long in some spots, like Rousseau's incredibly long. Mm -hmm. And it's it's causing some issues. It's also helping with those outside those blitzes or those fire calls that some people call them as far as getting pressure and getting in the backfield for tackles for losses and things like that. So I think McDermott has done a really good job of saying, you know what, we're not going to line up in two gap. I'm not going to sit there and be able to hold an A gap or a B gap for a long time with some of these guys I have because we just don't have the the just pure so size. And, he, and even Phillips, who's a big dude, he moves well. And he got some some pressures and made some plays because – Almost had an him. interception. Yes, almost had the interception. So I think that's one thing McDermott's doing really, really well. He's moving that front, and it's causing some issues with the offensive right. lines of the opposing team. What impressed me about the defense this week, obviously, that we held them in three points until it didn't matter anymore. And, you know, basically under 100 yards um, until it didn't matter anymore. My my whole thing was we stayed aggressive for the yes. for the whole game um, until like, you know, legitimately a couple minutes left uh, where, you know, it was that garbage time. And a lot of the starters had started, um, you know, coming in less or not coming in at all. Um, but he stayed aggressive, which is not his style normally. So, um, I respected that. And when I rewatched the game today and I ended up rewatching it twice, not on purpose, but, um, on, on NFL plus, it just replays if you have the television on. Um, so once the game was over with it, it just replayed again. So, um, what I didn't notice, you know, the first time and I, I noticed it, you know, the second time, um, yeah, I was really impressed and I hope they can keep this going realistically um you know i know that you know after what the the raiders did to um to the chargers there's probably not a chance that they're going to lose like 63 to whatever again like it's probably right. not going to happen um but this i mean this team can put up numbers against against the you know this chargers team especially without their starting quarterback and there is absolutely no reason why we should not walk out of their double-digit victors. You know, I, I think, and to kind of go back, you know, what you were talking about, kind of McDermott earlier in the season up until like maybe a few weeks ago with the passivity of some of his calls to now, I think everybody's got to look at this as well. When you look at how many starters we have out on that defense, and, you know, Roy makes a point in the comments that Daquan will probably be available for Miami. But when you look at when you look at this defense, a lot of guys had to play a lot of snaps that weren't used to playing a lot of snaps in the past, meaning not saying they weren't good players, just that, you know, there there comes a time where you learn you're still learning. You're learning what McDermott wants. You're learning leverage you're learning different things and if you aren't getting a lot of snaps it takes longer to 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 mature at your position now these guys are 
to the latter part of the season with just a few games left. They've got a ton of snaps under their belt. They're getting more comfortable with what he wants. And I think that that's a big part of this. I think this defense is becoming much more comfortable with what McDermott wants. And I know that Daquan's coming back, tremendous player. But it's not like he needs to rush himself back to get in there because the guys that are playing are not playing at a high level. I think the guys that are playing are playing at a high level. So Mm -hmm. that gives us a chance. They have their weeks. You know, that gives (laughs) us a chance to kind of sprinkle. Well, you know, Sarah, I don't, I don't always, I don't always agree at that point. I don't think that we're going to go out there and keep everybody. So so Jerry, I actually had to defend myself because I supposedly defend settle and I defend um, Jordan Phillips all the time. And I think that they're the best players. I don't remember ever saying that. I remember saying I sat next to Settle on an airplane and that he chose to sit there, which was, you know, in the middle seat, which was kind of funny. And that Jordan Phillips came up to me once and, you know, asked me if I would like to take a selfie with him. And I said, sure. And, ooh, sorry, my computer just went dead for a second. Um. So I don't know whether or not, you know, I ever said that they were like great players or not, but I, uh, I don't remember saying it, but regardless, like they have their moments, they have their issues. Um, But if we can get Daquan back, I just don't think he should come back prior to, um, to the playoffs. I'd rather have him healthy. He's getting up there in age. I'd rather have him healthy in the playoffs. Um, you know, that, well, you know, whether or not we make it now, that's not saying that the Miami game, I wouldn't put him out there for, you know, 20% of the snaps or something just to get him out there. But I would definitely not, you know, rush him back for over the next couple of weeks. Well, if I was you, the first thing I would say to defend myself in an argument about guys like that, it probably wouldn't be the fact that Jordan Phillips wouldn't take a selfie with me. Although, yes, that's <laughs> flattering. Um, we can have a whole nother hour long show about the, you know, the logistics of those points. But I think that I think that I'm I sure think, they would take a selfie with you if, if you know, you were no, they wouldn't. They would not. I don't wear hoop earrings, but that's not the point. The point is, the point is my earrings alone. how many years? No, I told you I like them. It reminds me of growing up my, my cousins. But hmm. why? How many years has Jordan Phillips played in the NFL? I mean, probably, what, 12, 13 My point. Ish. My point. If he's trash, why do we continue to pl- – to? why yeah. does somebody continue to pay him good money to play football? Because he's a good player. He's well, a and, very good player. Whether or not, you know, I, I know what I have defended. I like his energy. I like his attitude on the field. Right. I like the fact that he is motivating and that – you know, no matter what, like he loves the fans. Like, so that's the part I, you know, that I will defend when it comes to him. But I don't, I don't remember ever saying how great because I know I've pulled up their PFF stats. I know that I've watched all of, you know, all 22. I know that I've watched every single game live and on replay this year. I don't remember ever defending their play per se, but. Um, I was told that people had receipts of me uh, defending the, the, you know, yeah, their asses, well, but whatever. It Spence, is, what it is Spence doesn't count, Sarah. Spence does not count. Oh, I mean, so you even know who called me out about it? <laughs> of course he did. The guy that'll die on a hill to get rid of the head coach that's got the team playing at a level they hadn't seen in a long time is the guy that would call you out on that. So no, Spence does not count. Um, I wouldn't even lose any sleep over that. Right. But I but didn't. The, but, but I want to move a little bit, and we talked about it before the show. I want to move a little bit to the offensive line and just kind of obviously just a huge game rushing the football on Sunday. I thought, you know, right away when you run the ball like that, everybody goes, what are they doing? Their scheme's got to be unbelievable. It must be complex. We did not run a complex scheme, folks. Um, watching the All-22, we we were doing what we've been doing the last few weeks, and we do it very, very well, I think. We run the, you know, we run the dart play, which is the single tackle pulling with the, with the inside zone look. We ran some, we ran some pin and pull, um, which is where the the guard will block down, and you'll see Mitch Morse pull around the outside. Something made famous by, by the Chiefs did that a lot, and then also you'll see Jason Kelsey do that a lot. But then we also ran some stretch and things like that. So our running game was not like it was some kind of revolutionary scheme. We took advantage of the Cowboys and what they do. 
Um, I think we took advantage of the Cowboys where we ran the ball to their weak side. So they like to put the – the we ran to what we call offensive line-wise, we call it a one technique. So the one technique lines up on the inside shade of the guard, which if you run to the one technique, you have pretty much a built-in double team with your guard and your center. So we would run that double team, and we did a really, really good job. I think one thing that we saw this week, and I don't know if anybody else saw it, Sarah, I was going to ask you this. I think that 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 my man for the Cowboys – uh, 11. I can't can't believe I can't remember his last name. Micah Parsons. I think Micah Parsons is an unbelievable talent. He clubbed Spencer Brown one play. It was like the reincarnation of Reggie White. But one thing I'm not sure that he is definitely comfortable with is getting off of blocks and having big offensive linemen in his face right away. He likes his space. He likes to make plays with his athleticism. Um, we did a really good job getting a hat on the hat, especially McGovern. McGovern is athletic as they come. And he was able to get on them, shadow them, and move them. The guys that were really, really impressive to me was 64 and 79. Torrance and Brown are becoming a wrecking crew together. They can double-team anybody. They move the line of scrimmage. They're the old, you know, taking a guy from point A and moving him to point B. I think those two had a really, really good game Dawkins in the running wanna- end. Dawkins won uh, the angry runs along with uh, James Cook for him moving people yeah. out of the way. <laughs> Dawkins, is, Dawkins is finished down there in the far end zone away from was, the tunnel was as good as that. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that was that was picturesque. So um, I don't know if you got to watch uh, Dan um, or I'm, I always kill his last name or Orlov- Orlovsky. Yes, Orlovsky. Um, yeah. he, he actually, uh, you know, had a uh, review of um, the running game and stuff. And it was he he kind of said the same thing. It was easy, but it was all about seeing what was in front of you yeah. and, and being able to read that. And he was like, right. the fact that Josh was able to read, okay, here is where Michael Parsons is. So we are gonna put, you know, whether it's the tight end on here, we're gonna overload this side, and then we're gonna run James Cook to the other side. It was just the fact that for the first time in a while, um, I was impressed that they were giving Josh credit for his mental game, like, you Mm -hmm. know, getting people lined up correctly, getting people, you know, getting, you know, everything um, called correctly. And I know that's part of what Joe Brady is doing, obviously, as well. He's seeing things, he's calling down the play. Um, But I was pretty impressed because, you know, there's been a couple of people who've kind of, you know, dissed Josh in the past that, you know, he's not really a mental quarterback. He's more of the, you know, the, the physical quarterback. Right. Um, so I definitely enjoyed that, uh, you know, watching that uh, on on Sunday. It was definitely not what I expected. I did say that I it, it was going to remind me of the Dolphins game um, offensively, meaning that I felt like after um, the you know a slow start or us matching, one team was going to take it take it away, um, which kind of happened. It was a little bit of a slow start first quarter. You know, it was seven zero. Um, but then in the second quarter, we kind of took it away. It just was definitely not not the passing game that I thought, and I think everybody else thought it was going to be. Um, it was definitely all running game, um, which I'm happy for Cook. Um, I don't know. I th- I tweeted it the other day. Um, if you know, if people haven't seen it, he's now second in rushing with 968 yards, um, only behind CMC. He's fifth amongst running backs with 5.1 yards um, per rush. He's first amongst running backs with 9.2 yards um, uh, per target for uh, receiving. He's fifth amongst running backs with 433 yards receiving. He's second against uh, amongst running backs, third in the whole NFL with uh, with all purpose yards with 1401 behind CMC and Tyree Kill, which both are literally, you know, what top five in um, MVP voting right now, you know, with all the people, you know, not voting, but. Um, you know, with everybody talking about it. So, I mean, let's go cook, man. You know, half of us were ready to write him off at the beginning of the year. We were all talking about, you know, let's get, you know, Henry, let's get, you know, another running back in here. Let's get his brother in here and get, let's get Delvin in here. I'm, I'm just proud of this kid. You know, I really am. And, uh, I hope he keeps it going right into the the playoffs and I'm going to continue to act like we are going into the playoffs. (laughs) So. 
The same guy that wanted Henry is probably the same guy that wants the head coach fired. The same guy that has a no, problem. No, I himself. wanted Henry. I love, the same I love guy, Derek the Henry, same, though. The same guy that, that said that we needed to keep uh, Edmonds and that Bernard wasn't going to do anything. It was the same. Yeah, I mean, I get it. But anyway, Roy makes a really good point. He says, Cook's like he's developed some patience waiting for blocks to develop. I think James Cook is your prototypical uh, zone blocking back. He's got that instinct that Thurman had. Thurman had that instinct to be able to, to, to let things develop, hop back behind blocks and those types of things. And, you know, I think that was a really, really good point by Roy. He is a much better zone runner than we think, but he can also do some other things. And I, like, for, for instance, you know, the first play of the game, if anybody remembers first play of the game, it went for about three yards, four yards. He Cooks was tackled by by Demarcus Lawrence, who made the play from the far side of the field when he beat when he beat um oh our tight end that just came back. Knox? Who's our yeah, he beat Knox across his <laughs> face. Okay. I know I, I that's why you gotta help me sometimes. No, and so great. he beat Knox across his face. If Knox cuts him off, he might score the first play of the game. I mean, that's how dominating it was. You know, you just to go back a point, and then I want to go back to Cooks. You brought up about Josh and and using his brain and all that. Sarah, it, it's not real hard to see the one technique. If the OC tells you run the ball to the one technique, if you can't figure out where the one technique is, we've got an issue. And um, those were the kind of some of the games we had back in the day. I mean, Jim knew he was going to. He had multiple plays out of the huddle. He was going to run it to the one technique. Um, every now and then, Kent had to turn around and tell him, uh, no, that's not where we're supposed to run it. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's one of those things where, yeah, so, but you're right. I mean, the more you can get Josh involved with stuff like that, the more he comes along and makes some of the plays that he that he does with his feet. And he did a, I thought the best thing he did this weekend, Sarah, was as well as we, pa- as well as we rush run blocked, we did have some issues in pass blocking. Torrance is a bit of an issue in some pass blocking right now. But Josh is like, it's very Doug Flutie-like. He gets out of a lot of messes. And um, even though sometimes he will cause some sacks with the way he runs out of there, this past weekend his feet were, were you know, dynamic and he did a great job eluding pressure. Yeah. I got a question for you, and this is something I, I brought up to you a little bit earlier on, on text. We look at Cooks. We're talking about Cooks and how well he runs the ball. He's now becoming a weapon catching the ball out of the backfield as well. And not just out of the backfield, they'll line him up in slot and things like that. Is Brady's insistence in getting Cooks involved in the passing game an indictment on the talent at the wide receiver position? Yeah, I mean, I feel like um, everyone, I, I don't want to say everyone because it's only been two OCs, but I think they're starting to realize um, what we have. Now, I don't want to put down uh, Kincaid this game, um, especially now rewatching the game and and realizing that he had the wrong gloves on. He changed his gloves, and once he changed his gloves, he like caught the next you know two that were were thrown at him. Um, but you know, you know, Gabe obviously is is a problem, um, and you know I don't see him resigning here um, at all at this point. Uh, Hardy, you know, non-factor. Um, Sherfield, not non-factor. Um, at this point in time, uh, someone's going to need to step up um, in the in the playoffs, and you know, it, provided we can get there, um, someone's going to have to step up. And you know, hopefully, it's Kincaid and Knox, and we can figure out something with with Gabe. Um, the one thing is, is you know, Gabe tends to to you know step up on in some of those bigger games. So hopefully, he'll. Yeah. He'll um, step up for um, the next couple of games, you know, at the end of this year. But I mean, even um, even Steph, I mean, Steph was other than obviously um, what what Cook did, um, re- you know, receiving. Steph was really the only other receiver out there um, th- that did anything. And he his numbers were abysmal this this week as well. I mean, all receivers were. Um, I'm just glad that, that Brady stuck with the run. It was working. And instead of, you know, moving away from it, he stuck with it, but we need, we need help. And I hope, I really hope no matter what happens at the end of the season, I don't care. I mean, obviously I care if we won, win the Super Bowl, but that doesn't change the fact that heading into the draft, we need a wide receiver too. Um, and I, I don't want that to dissuade us from also looking at um, a wide receiver in free agency. 
I think we need both. Do I think we can afford um, a super expensive, um, you know, free agent wide receiver too? No. Um, but I do think that we need to look for someone who's capable and then we need to, we definitely need to look at the, um, the, uh, the draft. All right. Let's, let's let why, him in. Why, why are we letting him in? <laughs> why are we show, letting, so. why are we letting, why are we letting Captain Buzzkill on the show? Wait a minute. I didn't. Oh, even, hey, I didn't, Spence. What's up, man? I didn't even jump in to get in. I was coming in. I was going to leave comments in the private chat, but thank mm -hmm. you for, uh, for a lot. No, right. I really was. <laughs> <laughs> I really was. Thank you for letting yeah. me in. I actually uh, wanted to, to jump in because Dan Freddie had a question for Sarah. Um, sorry to interrupt mm -hmm. the conversation that was happening, but he just wanted to know about how afraid you were of your fantasy football matchup over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, my starting quarterback is um, is on IR now, so um, I'm hoping that uh, you know Jared Goff, who's you know had a great week last week, he had five touchdowns, um, can have another good week this week. So uh, he's you know what's funny is that three people that are three or four people that's on his team is on my team on my other league, so it's hard mm -hmm. to like hope you that they do bad, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah. but I'm not, I'm not afraid. at this point, I feel, you know, a little blessed to be in the playoffs because, you know, I had a little bit of a struggle in the middle of the season uh, where I lost a couple in a row. So I'm not stressed out. He just wants me to be stressed out because he wants to talk yeah. his shit, but yeah, Dan just wants to, he just likes to talk shit in public. So I just, I chose to give him his little moment of fame here because he wants to win. <laughs> uh, but Hey, I just wanted to really honestly, God, I wanted to jump in and say Merry Christmas and happy holidays to both of you. Um, I know I'll see Sarah, but uh, big O, I don't I won't get to see you anytime soon. But hey, man, look, I appreciate you this year. You've been nothing but amazing for Buffalo Rumblings and everything uh, that you've brought to the team. You've taught me so much and I just appreciate all the knowledge you bring. And and then and then just also just you're a good friend. You're a good friend. So I just want to jump in and say thank you. And then Sarah, man, you I mean, can we even like can we even I don't think there's enough time for me to speak about how much Sarah does for Buffalo Rumblings as a whole. And then for me, you do so much for me and for everybody. I just wanted to appreciate you both and say Merry Christmas and happy holidays and that I love you both. And like really, I, I just I couldn't I couldn't appreciate you more than I do. Honestly, well, 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 Spence, I, I need to say this. We're referring to Sarah from from now from here until she decides to to announce what she's going to announce at some point. Um, but she's the the host formerly known as Sarah Larson. So <laughs> Sarah Christine yeah. is in the building. Yeah, no, 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 not nothing. Let's not let's not give that away. Oh, yet. Oh, no, I, I, I will. I mean, edit. I put it in my name. I will say well, because a lot of edit people. No, a lot of people are going to um are going to wonder. I just I get a lot of people on Facebook who like looked me up from like Twitter and stuff. I don't want people just It's probably Jordan Phillips wanting to see who that girl was that he took the picture Shut with. Up. You guys are so terrible. <laughs> well, maybe so it, terrible. or maybe it, maybe it was Steph when he but after he winked I, at you, he was looking on Facebook. I just had FOMO. Hey. Just so everybody knows. Yeah. Just, Spence yeah. jumped in and I was like, "Wait a second. Like I, I got I didn't I'm, even mean no. to. They put But anyway, Anyways, as I was saying, as I was saying, my computer keeps on. Um, I, I think I'm going to just try to stick with like Sarah Christine so that people don't try to look me up on, on Facebook. I put like more like I put pictures of my son and stuff on that, like on Facebook. It's a little bit. And more by the personal. way, anybody that wants to offer me money to get her real name and address, just let me know. Okay. I was just going to say, hit me up. I'll give it to you. Hit like, hit you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Super, yeah. chats, but... super chats get priority. <laughs> you guys yeah, I, I got herself. If somebody wants her cell phone number, you got 50 bucks. Show me I I'm just kidding. <laughs> huh. Let's make it rain up in here. I don't know who's Spence, man. I I, I appreciate those those kind I think, words, man. Spence, I think much. we were trying to put it up at the same exact time. No, I'm the, trying to count. Oh, he said I can't oh. count, so I'm trying to count. And I'm like, you're right. I don't know how to count. But Jerry, I'm sorry. What were you saying, sir? I said thanks for the kind words. I love yeah. you too. I appreciate you letting me be a part of this. It's been it's it's a lot of fun. I've got to meet really really good people and become friends with some good people. And um, hopefully, I get to see a bunch of you guys in a couple of weeks when I'm up on Orchard Park. Yes, let's make for the that for the for the AFC Championship game. You mean? Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. no I'm going up for the Patriots game. <laughs> yeah. See, and I'll tell you see, what, the, what you freaking, <laughs> what you freaking people resell your tickets for, it might as well be the AFC Championship game. 
Dude, the secondary market this year sucks, bro. Yeah, bro. I made it. I made I a little bit some, of mistake. I found some good ones, man. I found some. I found five together well, under under two hundred bucks a piece. But it's the secondary. Like, I, 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 sorry, sorry, Spence. Well, no, I'm saying we're talking like that now, but it's like earlier in the year, like when the bills sucked, like when when we weren't winning week after week. People were complaining. Also, it's funny how we complain regardless of what side of the fence we're on. If the bills are great and tickets are $500 a piece, we're complaining. The bills suck and they're $35 a piece, we're complaining. Like My, let, seats, come on. my seats are so great that I never once, other than when I sold you my tickets for, for face value, but I never once sold my tickets for less than $350. So, <laughs> I made a and I only would sell the one. So to yeah. have a single ticket... For face value. So for so, three fifty. So Sarah and Spence understand this because you but you guys have both been season ticket holders. But to hear the Bills finally get good after twenty years, right? And like the tickets mm -hmm. are really expensive, and people are on Twitter like, "Oh my God, I guess I'll never get to go to a football game again because you a holes are trying to sell tickets for blah 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 blah." I suffered. And then for and then the Bills long. and then the Bills are like five and five or four and four and like no. are sucking and not playing well, and you can't even sell the tickets. Go to the game. It's like where are you now? I have had to pay to watch crappy football for 20 years. It's my right to sell these tickets for a lot of money. It's my right. Well, I appreciate you, uh, Dan, for uh, funding my. Hey, do I get five bucks? Do my, I get five bucks? My, my drink or two. <laughs> By the way, I... if you guys, if you've never had Coquito, it Wait, is. Cocaine? Sarah. What'd you say? Co Wait, pause. have you been? Have you, you said co on? Did you say cocaine? What did you say? You Coquito. have cocaina? Yeah. Cocaina? <laughs> Coquito. Cocaina. The show is. Oh, God. I know. I don't know what Hump Day was. We, hump Day I was going to say, we had ago. to carry over from your guys' Hump Day at this point. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we're helping. I don't think we're helping. Yeah, we're not. Look, I'm going to get out of here. I, I'm just, I, I didn't mean to jump in. And Joe I did. didn't mean to jump oh. in. Yes, I did. Well, he did. I absolutely well, you did. meant it. But well, you meant it. But you meant it. Hype like because you. I didn't mean to. He literally. So I just realized he literally put FOMO. <laughs> yep. He was okay. He, he was. But if I didn't jump in, then Joe wouldn't have had the fear of missing out, and he there wouldn't have go. jumped in. So we're all good. I just oh, I wanted to we jump gonna, in. I thought we were going to have. A, I thought you were jumping in. We were going to have a talk about. You want the head coach fired. That's what I thought we were going to talk about. Oh, let's oh, do you, it. Let's do you it. Get him, you get him started. Don't get him riled up again. Let's go. Let he's, me like pour a, he's like a diesel engine. Yeah, you on. get him going, he don't shut Hold down. On. I pour a shot to that. Let's go. Let me uh, open this up. <laughs> what are you trying to do, Jerry? Let's go. I'm, I mean, I'm I'm just trying to understand you, Spence. I mean, you know, some men just like to die on mountains. I mean, it just, uh, you know, that's just what they do. And okay. you, you seem to be one of those dudes. Well, let's do this. Uh, uh, Buffalo Freddy, thank you for your super chat. Yeah, we thank appreciate you, Buffalo you. Freddy. I'll see uh, you Spence, in a few weeks. Yeah, Spence can't count, and that's okay. I don't need to count for this because I'm about to dog walk Big O. That's what's <laughs> about to happen. So, listen, this this is where it is, man. And it's, Okay, I'm, I was joking, obviously, because I know I can't dog walk you because you're just like a giant. However, <laughs> <laughs> however, can't this confirm. is how I feel, man. I would, pay, I would pay to see that. At least you try. Can't confirm. I, I would pay to watch me try. Like, that would be the funniest thing in the world. But this is the real, this is the way I feel. Like, I, I'm not upset with, with Sean McDermott. I think Sean McDermott is a fine coach. Like, I think he's, he's a fine leader of men. I think he's a fine man. I have no issue with Sean McDermott. My, my take when I say that I'm ready to move on from Sean McDermott is not because there's a problem. It's more so because I think something is just stale. So like, for instance, like I like Wonder Bread, you know what I'm saying? Like I love Wonder Bread. I get Wonder Bread every time I buy groceries. The problem with Wonder Bread is that I can't, like I get paid bi-weekly. It gets stale weekly, not bi-weekly. I got to get Wonder Bread every week, not bi-weekly. <laughs> That's Sean McDermott to me. Sean McDermott is he's fresh when the season starts. He's fresh when things are going good. He's fresh in those moments. I need a guy that knows how to motivate a team when things are going wrong. And what we saw earlier this year, he had to fire a guy. Last year, he had to fire a guy. The year before that, he had to fire a guy. You always have to get rid of guys to motivate your team. I need a guy that can motivate and become fresh again without having to let go of somebody else's job to make it done. That's all I'm saying. I think Sean McDermott right now, we're on the upswing. 
we're about to get to the playoffs, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, beg for Sean McDermott to be fired because right now the team believes in him. After Ty Dunn's article, everybody's believing in Sean McDermott. So I'm not gonna be the one only guy to be like, get rid of him. <laughs> no, let's all go in on Sean McDermott. But after the season, I think a real conversation needs to be had about the results that have happened in the playoffs. And I think to look at that, let's talk about how he's unable to keep teams fresh. That to me, that's a big that's a big conversation. The, so the can re- I ask the I real say- the, the real life ratio of Ty Dunn uh, that's going on right now is is pretty incredible as far as just the Bills Mafia kickback as far as that goes. But uh, I said it on on the show on Hump Day, and I'll let you, sorry, Sarah. Uh, no, you're the, gonna you're the, gonna prove my point that I was gonna the, ask. Yeah, the reality is, is we're watching a head coach change philosophy midstream, uh, regardless of lying to us prior, right? So, which I think to me bodes him the uh, opportunity to get a couple more games before we just say we need to have a real conversation. So let's finish out this run, get to the playoffs, see what he does in the playoffs, and if he turtle shells, that's a Joe Millerism. If he if he turtle shells again. Uh, then yes, we need to have a real conversation. But if he if he's like, f it, like I'm throwing caution to the wind, and we're gonna go down swinging every freaking game. This team can not only win the Super Bowl, but he deserves to stay. But now you had said on uh, on Hump Day, um, throw four first. I don't know if you're being facetious or not. Call at him Sean out. McVay. Call him out. Um, Call him out. Taking yeah. that off the table, what person out there? can guarantee you because you were like i want that you guys are all like i want this i want this i want this can guarantee you all those things that you want that sean, that sean mcdermott is not giving you because at this point in time what you're going to get is someone that's been fired from another team someone that doesn't have the experience the only example that i need is john gruden leaving the raiders to go to the buccaneers and takes over for Tony Dungy, who could not, not get that team that. over the hump and wins a mother truck and Super Bowl with Brad Johnson. But not even that. Like, Brad, use your, use your word. Brad, but use your word. Use but your Joe, word. Or FOMO. I'm sorry, according to your name on the screen. FOMO. <laughs> like, not even that, FOMO. Like, let's just talk about the fact that when Sean McDermott was hired as the head coach as the Buffalo Bills, no one in Buffalo. But we weren't knew expecting him. To, we weren't expecting that's, that's Super Bowl that's, that year. That's not no, his no, point. But, okay. That's not no, his point. Isn't that I was expecting him to go to the Super Bowl? That's not his point. No. It is. Hold on. If He's we don't want any clown, it's a any, show. hold on. Any clown. Get me right. any clown if, with Josh Allen. You're if, right. This is the line to gain. Holla if, at me. Go ahead. Do if thing. it's any clown, then why not keep Sean McDermott? If it's any clown, if, my point is because point Sarah is, Spence is the 2023 hover parent. It's never okay, his kid's fault. It's my, never his kid's my, fault. It's me? the teacher, no it's the coach, what, it's whoever. Me? It's never his kid's fault. Yes. Are you my kidding me? Yes. Is, hold yes. On. My point yes. is, at the end of the season, if you go and get somebody else, you are going to, in oh, essence. I'm really going to take the shot. You are going to. <laughs> I'm going to take the shot. You're going to Y'all you're really going to make over. me take the shot. I poured the shot because I thought this was going to be friendly, like sparring. <laughs> I thought this was going to be friendly sparring. Oh. I'm really going to take the shot because I feel like this is actually preparing for a heavyweight okay. bout. Okay. You got Big so O take taking shot shots so at me. And go ahead. So I I, I'm just, I'm right. shocked. I'm thinking My... this is friendly fire. I come in here talking about Merry Christmas and how much I love both of you. And Jerry <laughs> is taking sh- Okay. All right. Let's go. Uh, let's go. My, my let's whole go. point is everyone saying, that they don't want Sean McDermott because of X, Y, Z, but bringing somebody else new in, you're not guaranteeing that they're going to change it around. The difference is when Sean came in six, seven years ago, no one knew. I know, right? He has to disappear when I'm talking. No one knew who he was, but we weren't. We didn't have Super Bowl aspirations at that very moment. So it's it's, it's, it's more about. It's not about you don't know what's coming in. It's about you know what's here. And but the reality, again, the reality is, the, is the reality is, is you've got a head coach, right? That it, it remains to be seen. And will the truth ever come out of how much he meddles? Right. It's, it, he is. He has He's said, the head coach. He's supposed to run the Actually, team. Jerry, Jerry has a, the best perspective because Jerry is a former mm-hmm. NFL player, but there's something to be said for Ken Dorsey getting fired for no longer running Josh Allen, 
changing the offense inside of the, the scope of what Brian Dable left him changing the offense inside of it to the point where the offense became incredibly conservative. Uh, and then your head coach stands there in the, in, at the podium and says, we're not playing complimentary football. The offense is not living up to the, to the space that the defense is playing in while you are potentially the one that's de deciding how the offense is playing or, or the parameters by which they're going to play. And then you fire the offensive coordinator. Right, and Joe. Him. I don't know whose side you're on at this point. <laughs> I can so play both confused. sides. I can but here's both my sides. point. Okay, here's what my you point. Doing? <laughs> it, it's obviously Dorsey was a huge issue this year. Between Dorsey and injuries, those were two huge issues. I love, I love Mike Tomlin. I think Mike Tomlin Same. is the best coach in the, in the NFL. Same. Same. Tomlin is getting all kinds of heat. One of the things that Tomlin gets heat for more than anything is he is too loyal to his assistants and he keeps guys way too long. It's a stealer. If thing. you remember, it's a stealer he's, thing. if it's he's the, if, but it, no, it's not a stealer thing. The first it's, time the first time the Steelers have ever fired a, a, a coordinator in season was when he okay, just did it. Let me, first time can, ever. let me, let me finish please. Yep. Yep. He, and the point I was going to make was he fired the OC wasn't getting it done. I love the fact that, that, that Sean McDermott realized what the problem was and got rid of Dorsey in the middle of the season and went to Brady. OK, here's the deal. You talk about a coach meddling in business. Marv Levy sat in on every every special teams meeting. Marv Levy was the guy who put in our short yardage goal line package every week. He's the head coach. He's supposed to know what the hell the team is doing from top to bottom, Marv including the equipment managers and everybody else. That's his job and his job description. So I have no problem with that. If you want to get on them for maybe some late game snafus because we want them to be we want them to be more aggressive, the minute he's aggressive and gives one over the top, you two are going to be on on Wednesday on Wednesday night bitching that he didn't play prevent and let a guy get behind the never, quarterback. I would never bitch that somebody it's, didn't play it's prevent. It's the same. It's the same stuff. I would never so, bitch. I'm literally about you know, to pop. I'm about to pop. I'm about to pop. I'm about to pop. No, Joe, I'm about to pop, though. That's, I'm about from to pop. That, that's from all them groceries you've been shoving in your mouth the last 10 minutes on the show. <laughs> hey, that's why hey, you're about to no. pop. I just had four chips and four shots. It was more of the shots, but I'm about to pop. I'm going to just tell you, I don't even have a take on what you just said. I just want you to know I'm going to get you. I just wanted to say that. Go ahead, listen, Joe. Listen, <laughs> listen. I, I believe the conversation, if my, my history is correct, and as of late, I've not been correct a lot because I'm old and my brain is failing me. Um, <laughs> there was an aspect of of uh, not uh, Marcia Broda and Marv Levy standing next to each other. And Marcia Broda was like, we should really run this like two-minute offense okay. all the time. And Marv Levy was like, nah, ain't having it, bro. And then they came back to it. And then finally, Marv said, we should do this. And then they started doing it. So to your point, yes, Marv sat in. Marv gave final approval. But Marv also saw when something worked and allowed it to happen. McDermott went the opposite direction. We have to stop running Josh Allen because I watched what happened to Cam Newton. And they destroyed Cam Newton. And Josh doesn't run like Cam used to run it. They're different players completely different players as much as they've got similar stats on the ground. But yes, McDermott has that final say, and he should. Every good le good leader should. But at the end of the day, if you're making decisions to the detriment of the team and then you fire somebody because of what how you have horse-collared them? Okay. Hey, Spence, your boy Buffalo Freddy is like your, your uh, Ed McMahon, dude. That <laughs> dude is the biggest co-signer of what you no, have to say. You know I I'm mean, be it's like you. every time you say no. something, he's over in the other chair going, yes, ha, ha, ha. yes. <laughs> first of all, I, I would love to give you, reference. first of all, I need to give you props for that Egg McMahon or uh, Ed McMahon reference. Like, I don't think many people understand the wrestling references and stuff. I think it was perfect. I love it. On top that of actually, that, I do want to just say that you. McMahon. That was a Johnny Carson reference, but that's Ed, okay. Ed, Vince, all of them, the big man, uh, is wrestling. Okay, I told you I've been drinking. Relax, man. Y'all gotta, gotta keep doing me dirty tonight. What is happening? <laughs> what is happening with Buffalo Rumblings? Are y'all coming for me? I'm what is side. happening? <laughs> Joe came for me on, 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 on hump day. Now he's on my side. Big O comes for me here. Sarah's coming for me here. Everybody's, <laughs> everybody's talking shit. What's happening? Don't just stay here. <laughs> it's an everyday occurrence. <laughs> man, I'm losing it. I thought I had friends, but... Big O, 
<laughs> this is this is the part that I want to disagree with you on, though, man. I just think that when you're talking about Sean McDermott, it's not about it's not it's not about just because I don't hate Sean McDermott and I don't necessarily want him fired. And I don't even think that Buffalo Freddie is necessarily co-signing with me. I think a lot of times he actually is the guy that I hate to see in the comments the most because he's the he's so annoying. I love him. <laughs> Shout out to Dan Freddie. I love you. He's so annoying. But. My issue with Sean McDermott is the fact that I, I just feel like you've proven to us that you are playoff caliber. You've proven to us that you can get us to a certain point. And you talk, you bring up a coach in, like in Pittsburgh. You, you bring up somebody who doesn't get fired after 18, 17, 15 years or however long they're there. This is, this is the thing that, that gets me, though. He has a championship. You get the benefit of the doubt. The same way that people talk about Josh now, that they don't talk about Pat Mahomes for having the same amount of interceptions or having the same amount of turnovers or having the same amount of bad games with certain type of turn. They don't talk about Patrick Mahomes the same way because he has two MVPs and two Super Bowls. You get the benefit of the doubt. Sean McDermott hasn't given us that. So last night on Chop Up and all day today, I've been getting cussed out. Look, I just... I'm going to ride with Sean because the team is riding with Sean, but I'm at the point where I'm like, let me get an offensive mind that can unlock Josh Allen the same way Steve Kerr unlocked Curry. Can I, can I just get something like I that? Just, I just feel like we need to have a head coach that's not involved in the offense and the defense as the play caller. I feel like we need to have a OC, we need to have a DC, and then we need to have somebody who is going to just care about what's the best interest of the team, yeah. period. I, I don't agree. like I don't like wh where Sean is right now, being both the, the DC and the head coach. I don't like it. I was I was okay with it at the beginning of the year. I'm not okay with it now, especially after a couple of calls that he made that was more defensively minded. Um, I, I feel like he needs to be the head coach. Um, so I'd like to see what we're gonna do. If, especially if he stays on as the head coach, I'd like to see what we're going to do at DC next year. And, actually, and that's whether or not Leslie's not going to come back or not. That's that's why I do a weekly show with her because she actually talks sense, unlike yeah. gibberish. <laughs> she she talks sense. She got points that are and I and and whether I agree with that or not, and I do actually agree with that with what you had to say. I think that there's somebody on staff. I think uh, I think Babich is a guy that you could look at this off season to possibly be the DC and take over. I like him. He's a young guy. He's a young mind. He he's, he's got good ideas, fresh ideas. You can do some of what McDermott wants, but then he can throw his this. wrinkles in. Can so I, I agree with Sarah more than anything. Can I ask you a question? What was yes, wrong please, with Leslie Frazier? I don't know. Ask Leslie. He's the one that left. Leslie said that he left because he needed a year off. So we got to believe that, right? He said he said more than that. He was very All detailed right. and intimate about why <laughs> okay. he left. Leslie, Leslie Frazier said, I left because with everything that happened in 2022, to include the basically the capping of the stone of DeMar Hamlin dying on the football field, I needed to step away for his okay. own mental reasons. Let That is Leslie on record. But he he chose to leave though, right? He chose to leave, yes, but to be honest with you, what did Leslie Frazier do? Leslie Frazier provided us the defense that we have, which is a non-aggressive prevent defense, Ben, but don't bring defense. And what we've seen in the so, last two weeks is a head coach that has changed his philosophy and is now only being aggressive to the wire. My only concern about hiring within, with it being Babbage, is whether or not it's still going to be the same situation where Sean's going to kind of have that that you know heavy hand. Um, and will Babbage be willing to say no Sean this is how it should be you know like um I don't I don't know if that would happen so I still feel like it would be Sean McDermott's defense um so you know I feel like we would need someone to kind of you know you know compete with him now a lot of people are saying that Salah might ha lose his job and how great would it be for him to come over as DC I wouldn't I would not mind that but there's no way they would both butt heads like you want to believe but do you do you not do you will you guys not give any credit to the fact that we've had an epic amount, probably historic amount of injuries? That we've is got amazing. a guy, we've got a guy that we paid X amount of dollars to that can barely get off the ball, and the defense is playing the way it is. And you look at the team in general that's in salary cap jail, and I know you all want to go out and hot and sign all these free agents this offseason. Nope. It's not going to happen because you don't have the money. Nope. Um, and so the answer is just to get rid of the guy 
that's here now that's doing a good job and bring in a dude to blow the thing up because he doesn't have all the players. I mean, that's what I'm saying is there's much more to it than just bring in a guy that's fresh. Well, if I'm going to have fresh food, I got to go get fresh groceries to somewhat plagiarize Bill Parcells. And we don't have any money to buy groceries. I don't think you better draft. Well, you know, we, what, what groceries are you want to get really with good. with uh, fifty cents and coins and a couple of a couple of uh, ones, you know? So, so I just wanted that the truck reviewer put: Does the Rooney Rule apply to assistants promoted to coordinator spots in season? During the season, it does not, but that is why they are still considered interim, um, you know, spots. So, like Dorsey, um, when Dorsey left, having Brady be interim OC. He cannot just be given the OC position at the end of the year. They still have to go through the um, different interview process for the Rooney Reel. And the coordinator I, started two years ago. Can I ask if I was right back then? Remember when I, Joe, remember everybody was yelling at me? Everybody, everybody was yelling at me. Because I said, I didn't think that we should hire a guy that was a rookie play caller versus a guy that's been in that position, whether it was college or not. 100%. No, and, you did say that. You, you did, props. But, but Mike McDaniel also never called plays and then never never was an OC. And he's the head coach of the Miami Dolphins, calling plays and is the OC. I don't well, I don't know. I, I don't know what's with you. I try, uh, and, and you're right. And so I'm not even gonna uh, d debate that fact. I I kind of trust the, the Shanahan tree. Agreed. Like I just trust the Shanahan tree. It just seems like Coaches that come from the Shanahan tree have success, whereas coaches that come from whatever tree, I don't know whose tree Belichick. you want to blame it on. If you, talking about, you want to blame it on Belichick? No, you're talking cool. about McDermott. McDermott is Andy Reid's tree, technically. And I, I do want to say this so he, real this quick point. Go ahead, Spence. Finish your point. Go no, ahead. no, I'm no, sorry. you're good. You're good, sir. You're good. No, the point I want to say is, is that you have to understand something. McDermott has a boss too. And and his boss is is Bean. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what we don't know what Bean says behind closed doors as far as how he wants things done and doesn't want things done. So to say, you know, and I'm going to go by what what Sal said here a second ago when he said McDermott insisted on 12 personnel all training camp. OK, mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, did he insist on 12 or did the guy that moved up in the draft and took Kincaid? Did he insist on 12? So let's understand that. Dorsey whole asked for it for a long time. I think no, Dorsey it wanted Dorsey. it. Right. Yeah, so it wasn't I'm... even just this season. And I'm sorry no. to cut you off here, but you got to look at last season too. That's the right. reason that they went out and had another tight end that OJ. they signed right. in OJ free Howard. agency that didn't right. work out. They wanted 12 personnel. Right. Like, so it wasn't. Is, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry, make your point. No, I was, no, all no, I was saying right. was, all I was saying was there's more involved than just Sean McDermott. Right. There's more involved than him. That's the point. 100%. So, I don't know where Sarah's to go from laughing. there. I don't know Look, where to go from there. <laughs> can I jump in for a quick second? We're, we're, we're about an hour here. So, as far as podcasts, when it comes to that, we have to uh, figure out how to end this show. Is there anybody within this show tonight that can do overtime? I feel like I can I can go for some time. I can, I can talk if people feel I can like go talking. For and, and I I go for a few more. And then I got to pack. I can go for a few more. And then I got to pack. Were you? Oh, you're headed back to headed to uh, L.A. Right, L.A. Um, Tomorrow morning. I was, yeah, I was going to say something as far as overtime goes, and I can't remember what I was going to say now, but it, it did pertain to just. Oh, I, I'm being accused of flip flopping a little bit here and there as it pertains to just mm -hmm. McDermott. Cool. There's, 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 there's both. There's two sides of this whole thing, and the reality is, is we don't know what the truth is outside of the fact that there's truth in both sides. So, could Sean McDermott have been handcuffing Dorsey? Yes. Could he have scapegoated Dorsey? Yes. Could Dorsey have been bad? Yes, all very true. Uh, if you is is McDermott as much as he changed the culture, uh, has he shown over the last couple of years that he has faults and flaws that he has not learned from? A thousand percent yes. And those faults and flaws generally come up against when he's facing a head coach that is potentially better than him. McDermott, and this is not a Joe Millerism. This isn't me, just some random rogue fans out there that don't like McDermott. Joe Marino talks about it often that McDermott gets out coached by better coaches than him. And that only happens in the playoffs. As much as Bruce Nolan says that wins are not a quarterback stat and he's a thousand percent, right? You know, what is a head coach stat playoff wins. And while McDermott is four and four, 
four and five in the playoffs, four and four with Josh Allen. The reality is, is he inevitably is going to face a head coach that's better than him because he hasn't learned from his mistakes and he's going to get beat. Now, the question is, is has he progressed enough to put himself in a position where he's learned from those mistakes? Can he stay aggressive on defense with a two or three possession lead? Can he not mess up the end of the guy end of the end of the game game management stuff? Can he allow his quarterback with 20 seconds and two timeouts to drive down the field and score a field goal and win the football game? Can he do the things that he needs to do, or is he going to crumble in those situations against a Sirianni, against an Andy Reid, against name better head coach here? That's the question. Has he progressed? Has he finally learned? I'm in the camp. I said it an hour ago that he's learned. We're seeing a transition I play think, out right now. He has, I think he went from, sorry, sorry. He went from the Eagles game saying we changed nothing on defense. Meanwhile, that defensive scheme changed in the third quarter against the Eagles to now we're going to go down swinging and he's being aggressive and come hell or high water. We're going to blitz. We're going to stay contested catches. We're going to stay on the wide receivers. We're going to do what we got to do to shut the game down, shut the offense down. If he yeah. stays that way in the playoffs, let's see what happens. I was going to say, if anything came from the, the Ty Dune, um article, is sometimes that little reflection, whether or not it's all true or not, it's that little reflection. Um, and then seeing everybody rally to your yeah. def, you know, defense yeah. or whatever, that maybe 100%. he's like, maybe I need to change a couple of things. Yep. Um, I'm going to play, play our outro to kind of head out, but then when, uh, when it's done, we're going to come back and whoever wants to chill for a couple more minutes, we can so nobody leave. Overtime. <laughs> Go Bill. <laughs> I got it in. <laughs> well, you got it, I got in. it in under the buzzer. <laughs> well, what I what I will Quick say question, is, is that show was sponsorless. I, I it's done. I said Dune, it's but it's done. done. It's done because that's okay. why I used I used it last week. I said the bills are not done, and I spelled it. I was gonna say because I've interviewed him. Well, I've interviewed him, and I'm like, so Ty done. Yeah, Sorry, it is done. I, I just I screwed it up. But like I said, I okay. even used it as my title last week. The, the bills are not done. And I said Dune for some reason. Sarah, that last point you just made was incredibly well said and wise. Um, the most reflective and, and uh, important moments of my life was when a critic, and I don't mean in a good way, a negative critic has come at me uh, to let me know of the things that they see in me that are not great. To which I always found a way to take that information back to a mentor, somebody that I was allowed to let speak into my life to say, hey, this is what was just said about me. Like, and obviously reflection, right? consuming it, internalizing it, allowing that person to speak into my life, revealed some things in me, even if it wasn't completely true, or even if parts of it were true and not all of it was true. And some of it was like based on our relationship or based on conversations or based on you know, fallout to what you just said, there's a great deal of potential that that has happened, that he internalized some of that, went to somebody, because I trust Sean McDermott. He's a leader of men. I've said many times that he's read a lot of the same leadership books that I've read. I know that by what he says and how he says them. There's no doubt in my mind, there's somebody in his life that he respects, that speaks in his life, that he may have taken that information to and been like, this is what was said about me. What do you think? And that person probably spoke some truths to him, not like negative, but some truths to him to which allowed him to internalize it and maybe came out on the other side, a yeah. better man. And I'll tell you what, if anyone ever has that situation where someone comes to you and be like, so someone said this, this, and this about me, what do you think? Don't ever lie to them. If they're you really know. coming at you and saying this person said this, that's your moment to say, I agree with them or you don't. But be yeah. honest with them in that moment because the only thing that they can do is grow from it. Um, I've learned a lot about myself um, through people telling me certain things. I've learned you know, to reflect on you know, the way that I've been over the, over the years and I really can say that I'm a different person now than I was 10 years ago. Sure. So it is what it is. I, th I hope, I hope that when it comes to Sean, that he's learning. Cause um, we, you know, I, I, I hope we don't move on. I, and I know I tweeted a couple weeks ago that I would be okay with us moving on. I am okay with us moving on, <laughs> but we all have to be in that mindset that if we do move on, what's going to happen, there could be a, reg a regression. Let's Go ahead. Your I was saying, let's share that question, but go ahead. Just no, say. but Spence has his hand up, so. Well, no, because not even that. I want to agree with everything that Sarah said, but I also want to take the perspective or I want to provide perspective 
that I think as a fan base, we also should provide some grace for somebody like a Tyler Dunn who did a lot of work. Because now I, I, I understand from the perspective of fan base where you're you're crapping on our head coach, you're, you're bringing negativity at a time that the team needs positivity and we need to be going towards winning. Uh, but I, I want you to understand that from the journalism aspect, you work on a story until it's done. When it's done, you drop it. And and if it if it drops at the right time, if God, I think there was a Jay Z. Uh, everything for me is a Jay Z quote. But it's one of those things. It's like if you know you let you know God in the door, and it, I'm not even you know I'm not even gonna do it. But it's one of the quotes where it's like if it's the right time where yeah. God comes in the door and it's cracked at the right time when you're trying to be creative and He's there, it happens. And and I think I think when you're looking at something like this. You have to you have to apply it in the same way where it's like he he's trying to drop something at a time when he finished it and he thought it was the right time. I disagree. With I understand. You on that. Wait, just hear me. I, I feel like just he had me. it done. I feel like he Wait. was waiting for the right time. But go ahead. I'm only telling you this. Uh, okay, and that's fine. That that is a hundred percent fine for you to feel that way. What I'm telling you from what I know, and I'm not trying to defend him because I had a planned inter Joe will tell you, I had a planned interview with him. I know you did. That I, that I decided to cancel. So there's a reason why there's not a Buffalo Rumblings uh, uh, interview with Ty. D like, I didn't have an interview with him on purpose. It was my ch my <coughs> choice to not, not do an interview for certain reasons. And this is one of the reasons. I, I think when you put a story like this, if, if the true intention of it is to tell the truth and the true intention of it is to give everybody a real objective or a real perspective of what's happening at one bill's drive, whether you're a player, uh, a coach or a staff member, then fine. But when you put that behind a paywall and then you complain about it, that's when I question it. But I think the story that was posted, I think everything that was said, I think there was a lot of good things that, is not talked about at all. Like there's a lot of things about Sean McDermott that was said in that, in those articles that paint Sean McDermott in a very positive light, but it's not talked about because the part that was made public was negative. Yeah. And then Ty Dunn chooses to come out and says, well, the public talks about me bad. Well, this is how you chose to move. Mm -hmm. So the, the, when you, when, when a fan base or when a, a certain type of, when we lose respect, cause you move this way, you can't be mad. It's the way you moved. He had a lot of good stuff in there about Sean, and I think if he would have released the entire article, I think everybody would have seen that he really did try to report the entire thing. But I think the way he did it, it made it look like a money grab. So for it's me, because it just, the, the important parts were all behind a paywall. Yeah, the, and the that's important what I'm saying. Part. It made it distasteful for me, so it made me say, "You know what? I don't even want to do the interview." And and, I, and and for me, I would want the clicks, right? You would think I would want the clicks. I just, I just say, uh, I didn't even, I didn't even hit him back for the interview one. And so, I have enough, I have enough relationships where I've had a couple of off the books conversations um, with people, um, and yeah. that's kind of why I feel like he's been sitting on it. So, yeah. but we got all bro Poe coming in. I hey, tried it thirty minutes ago. We must have said something that got him in here because he wouldn't come in thirty minutes ago when I asked. So. What's I up? didn't want to get on your normal time. I, I was good to come <laughs> in for the extra time. I'm, you know what I mean? If you guys need another head. I, I just wanted to bring up to to, to Jerry because Jerry is the only one that is a former NFL player that's been through this. But Matt Bynum says you move on from McDermott and bring in a head coach who isn't built to coach the current roster. And there's zero money in room to make magic happen uh, with a roster overhaul. Well, that's for the first part of that is true. And the second part is somewhat not true. D'Amico Ryans is literally doing that with the Texans right now. They they were trash. Bill O'Brien left them in horrible shape and they obviously are winning franchise. But I guess, Jerry, the they question have money. Uh, they, I think they've got some jail cap jail issues. I mean, the, I thought they had money, but go ahead. Regardless, but Jerry's the only person here that's been through what three head coaches? Is that right, Jerry? Three head coaching changes, Marv to yeah. Wade, Wade to yes. Greg. Yes. So you've been a part of like Marv transitioning to Wade, which went well, and then Wade transitioning to Greg Williams, which was a complete disaster and nightmare that literally yes. led to the the dark ages of this franchise. So I think you're probably the best person to speak on a player's perspective. New coach coming in, what does it mean? Like what? How do you feel? Blah 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 blah. I think the biggest. I think the biggest part about the coaching change is the style of coach that you bring in. Is he a? Is it a dictatorship? Is he a guy that is is super super strict? Is he a guy that tries to control everything you do? 
Um, or is he a guy that treats you like men? Does he allow you to make decisions? And that, that was the transition between Wade and Greg Williams, where you had Marv who very much treated everybody like men. If you got disciplined by Marv, it was in his office one-on-one, or he didn't say much of anything and you just got your check the next week and it was light. Um, then you went to Wade, which Wade was very much the same way. Wade made a few tweaks in how we worked and how we practiced and a few other things, but Wade was very much the same way as Marv. And what the downfall there was a little bit was you were shifting from a league of veterans into the world of heavy, heavy salary cap management, which you had a few veterans and then you had a ton of young guys. Mm -hmm. And to bring a bunch of young guys in and just say, okay, I need you to be men and make good decisions all the time, that all the time does not work. Then you went to Greg Williams who did things like, when we went to away games, and I, I don't know if Greg McDermott does this or not, and Fina will tell you one of the highlights of the week after working your ass off all week was when you went on an away game, you got to pick and choose the restaurant you ate at on Saturday night. And you went out on your own. You made reservations. And between John and Glenn Parker, I mean, we ate at some phenomenal places because, as you know, those cats yeah. are foodies. Who do you see? So up? we had some great food, came back to the hotel, had a good meeting, you know, maybe drank a little wine or something at, at dinner relaxed, went to bed, got up the next day, ready to play. Greg took all that away. There was none of that. It was eat at the hotel, meet as soon as, you know, as soon as the dinner's over, you know, you had this regimented style. So that's where a lot of things happen, especially with the vets. And, and a real life uh, example of that is Philadelphia. You had Chip Kelly coming in, who was telling, at the time, 30-some-year-old Jason Peters, who had been doing this back then for like 15 years, how much sleep <laughs> you're supposed to have. That you're supposed sense, to drink yeah. this smoothie at 10 o'clock, this smoothie at 12 o'clock. You're supposed to weigh this. You're supposed to – and Jason Peters like, dude, you're out of your damn mind, bro. Like, I've done you this this way for this I'm, long. I'm going to the Hall of Fame. Leave me alone. Right, no, right. <laughs> but, Jerry, this whole time and, – and, and this is probably dumb of me because, like, I haven't even tried to think of it in that perspective. Like, I thought of – like, at the time, I thought about it in that way because you had superstars. Like, I remember how Shady right. talked about them. But I hadn't even thought about, like, 15-year vets or 12-year vets. I hadn't even thought of it from that perspective. Right. Of like, bro, like – I'm a grown ass man. Right. You Go went ahead. I'm Marv. sorry. It's just like that. You yeah. just you just completely exactly. made me look you at went it. From Marv, you went from Marvin Wade, who was like, I'll never forget man. this shit. Like the season was over. You had exit meetings. Daryl and some of them cats had U-Hauls on the back of the truck. Like they were gone. Like the meeting was over. They were hopping in the truck and they were going home until it was time for like OTAs and stuff like that. To Greg, who shows up and says, you got like two weeks to go visit your family. Then you're back here and we're start workouts at this time. And I expect everybody to be back here. And dudes are like, I, I've been getting ready on my own for how long? I know what I need to do. I don't need to be here, you know, in this facility for another how many months I'm going to go home. And, and that's where, so if, you know, McDermott, I don't know what McDermott's style is off the field. I don't know I, what he allows his players to do or not do. We I have a guy here that might have some insight. Well, I can tell you um, and, and poke and yeah. jump in on top of me. So I've never told yeah. the story before, pause, but uh, pause, the, pause, the, pause. The, <laughs> oh, thank the, you. the Kansas city chiefs game, the 13 second game. Uh, everybody here knows that I have a relationship with Isaiah Hodgins. Isaiah actually got me and McKenna on field passes and we had to pick them up on game day, Sunday morning. And he's like, Hey, you know, swing by the hotel, right? Which is what you would expect, right? We're all at the hotel, swing by the hotel. It was an evening game or a four o'clock game or something like that. Um, and then, so we're kind of on the way and he's like, oh, change of plans. We're actually at a restaurant. So literally we go to this breakfast restaurant in Kansas City. The place is mobbed with Chiefs fans. And I roll around the bar, Isaiah McKenzie, Isaiah Hodgins, and I can't remember who else was one of their players sitting there just eating breakfast, like in street clothes, like just sitting there like manjing on yeah. breakfast. And like amongst all these Chiefs fans that had no idea who they were. So I would probably tell you, and Jeremiah could probably confirm, that McDermott is probably a little more relaxed. Right. And I think that's a big deal for a veteran ball club. And yeah. They appreciate that. And would, so that's where some of the changes might yeah. cause it would, have, it would Definitely, and I agree with you, it depends on who you bring in, right? So, like, if you bring in a guy like Mike Tomlin who is similar in mindset to Sean McDermott, you probably won't lose your locker room, especially the defense, right, because he's the head coach. You're not going to lose the defense if you bring in a guy like Mike Tomlin. You bring in an offensive guy who's going to bring in his new D.C., his new D.C. is going to want things ran his way, 
It's going to be his way or the highway. You're probably going to have to buy into a whole new system. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's my big – you don't know what's on the other end of that coaching carousel. And, and Sean's pretty free with his players. Like, he, he makes them do some pretty um, unoriginal things as far as timing. You have meetings and – there right. could be meetings at a certain time that that is just out of the way and like but before you go to the hotel you got to show up for before the game you got to show up for a meeting at a different place like these things are a little um a bit of a nuisance for the players but at the for the most part he gives his players a lot of freedom <laughs> like like driving from buffalo to kansas city playing the game i can't fly playing the game I'm surprised he did that. That just shows, you know, you know, what kind of player he is, number one, and how much he wanted to be there, number two. That's awesome. And then to have Rachel go with them is pretty, like pretty darn sweatshirt. cool. But to have the head coach let it happen, too. Like, the head coach is like, yeah, bro, if you want to drive. I'll, but we'll- speaking of that, did you see the jabronis on social media this week that were, like, flipping out about Jalen Hurts? So they're like, Jalen Hurts isn't flying with the team. He doesn't want to yeah. get the rest of the team sick. And First they're like, oh, so it's okay for him to fly commercial with all the other people <laughs> and get them sick, but he can't fly with the team. And they're like, dude, do you honestly think he's going to fly commercial? To Are you out of your damn mind? You yeah, know? He's got 250. He's taking a PJ. We yeah, exactly. PJ. Hey, PJ. Hey, oh, that's can the next we... picture they showed. He was minute. coming out of the PJ in Seattle. Wait a minute. Hold on. Can we talk about Jerry using the word jabroni? Like, like, right now, can we do that? Like, are we just going to ignore? Are we going to ignore the fact that he used the word jabroni? Like we're watching you said, WWF. You said we were. You said we were in wrestling today, so I'm in wrestling. Right. right. That was WWF mode. Like that was way before WWE. Like that was you going back. Hey, jabroni is a very is a underused word because there's a lot of it is jabronis in this town. Facts. Believe me. Facts. So all bro po, you showed so this I think this is the first time we've been on a show together. Um, but uh is you, it? you jumped in here, so clearly yeah, there was there was something you had to get off the chest, right? There's something you had to like like let go of, right? No, I, I and Sarah asked me to come in and, and yeah. spend some yet extra time. So I, I wanted to I mean, you guys were talking a lot, and Sarah had a lot of my points on on Sean and like getting rid of him and um the Dorsey thing and like I, I just – I am seeing a difference in Josh with a new OC, and so I can't I can't just say that's a coincidence. Um, mm-hmm. And so, like, I have to sit here and say Dorsey was holding Josh back because when he left, Josh mm-hmm. is now the player that we thought he was. And and that's, that's my biggest thing on Sean. Was it wrong for him to hold him as long as he did? Absolutely. That's on Sean. He should have fired him earlier. But – I also think him keeping him as long as he did was on Josh as well because Josh was the one that wanted him hired. And I don't think Josh had any input on him being fired because Josh is not the type of dude to go into the office and get one of his friends fired. Probably so, right. Can I say this? And, and and this might be a crazy point, but Uh-oh. did 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 Dorsey almost <laughs> – did Dorsey almost just let – because to me – Everybody talks about how Brady has let Josh loose. I think Josh is is doing what he does, but I almost believe that Josh is playing in more in more structure now than he did under Dorsey. No. I'm telling you, man. No. And when I say so, structure, listen. listen to me now. Listen to me now. Structure and Josh are a very tricky combination of words, right? When I say structure, you don't see him doing some of the dumb stuff he did. He might throw a pick, okay? Yes, that happens. He's not throwing the picks he was throwing under Dorsey, the we're going to try to force the ball downfield and some of the dumb stuff he was doing. He's still able to make plays, but when you look at the running game and the way that Brady's building this thing around him, he's still able to do what he does, but to me there's more structure around him to where he can even be more successful because he doesn't feel like he has to just be a cowboy every waking second of the the game that he's on the field. I think the word is controlled chaos, right? Like yeah, like yeah, the, the, yeah, and that's where I kind of wanted to go. That's where I wanted to go because I think I think what happens is like on one hand you want to respect the fact that Big O is a former you know starting offensive lineman for a great everything, team, everything but in a left great tackle era. You know what I'm saying? Like so, you want to respect that, and, and and it's like I don't I don't even want to question you when it comes to that. But it's like when when I watch the Buffalo Bills, and then you, and, and then you say like you kind of want to say what well, might not have been and you look at the clear difference 
from what it was with Ken Dorsey versus Joe Brady, and you look at what Joe, what, what Josh Allen is under Joe Brady, it's like I, he freed him, man. Like it was, but it's freedom within structure. Pete, you ask, it's just like players. Players act like they want to do whatever they want. Players thrive with structure. Okay, they, they thrive Everybody. because yeah. it's protection, yeah. right? And Josh is still able to go out and do what he does, but the offense has rhyme or reason now. And there is structure within the offense. It's not just drop back or it's not just calling plays to call plays. There's rhymes and reasons. They build the things. You see stuff done. You see the way that Josh is just absolutely – the backside of the defense, one of the reasons we're running the ball so well is because defenses now have even more fear than they did with Dorsey because they don't know when it's coming because of the structure of him pulling the ball. I mean, he's holding the backside of the defense like crazy. Because people have to stay back, and he did it against the Cowboys. So I think the fact that he's able to make the plays with his feet and do the things he's doing is because there is that structure within the offense. That's just I what think, I see. I okay, think the word maybe. usage, the the word usage of structure is a little different. Uh, and I think and the that's way it. that we're saying is that like I think that's it. Yeah, he tried to turn him into a conservative pocket quarterback. That's what Dorsey tried to do, and and that in turn made it look really hectic for him rigid. because Very he's rigid. sitting there trying to read a defense a pre-snap. Yeah. And not. So like the structure that they have now is a little bit of controlled chaos to where it looks way better because and less, he's it able looks to less do, structure. Right. right. So go, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you're right. Go ahead. I just wanted to say like, it looks way less structured. So like when you say like it's in a structured thing, I wanted to disagree, but I think what, what you're saying is right. But I think what we're saying is what we see is like, we see Josh Allen from last season and from the 2020 season that made us fall in love with him on a whole different level that like, you know, like we're seeing that version of Josh Allen that was in a, it was structured, but it was like, go be Josh within this realm. Yeah. Go, my bad, uh, bro. Po. Go ahead. Do you think, man? No. And that was the, per that was the perfect ending. That's how I feel about uh, the, what they've done for Josh as far as it, it's really like less, less is more, right? Less, Less right. reading a defense pre snap. No. Less like, how about this, Poe? Think about it this way: He's taking Josh back to more of what he's comfortable with, which is the college game. Yeah. If one's not there, maybe two. Then go be Josh. Yeah. As opposed to yeah. sitting back there reading one, and then I got to read two, then I got to read three, then I could. Do... Now it's if if the ball's going to go here. If it's not there, then go do your thing. And and that that's, that, that's, that's to me is what I'm Dorsey doing. did to him. To me, that's the, the interceptions he threw this year was where he was staring down his receiver. Well, no, Not yeah, I the last that, three I years that. has been a one, two, three, four. Go back to one guy. One, I two, think three, four. We're all saying the same stuff, guys. Oh, I think we're, we're about to get worked. I think we're saying hey. it different. Mookie, and hey, Mookie, what's up, dog? I just think that I just think we're saying the same things, but just it's just different nomenclature, so to speak. But I, I think Poe said it best. Mookie said the comment section. He section. He's got receipts. Yeah, he's up in here. <laughs> Coach Prime's up in here. I got receipts. Poe, what's up? Yo, what up, bro? Trying to find these receipts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mook, real quick. I know, I know everybody probably got something for you, man. One of the questions that I wanted to ask you just from the jump is just how, um, you know, from internally, I, I know you have a pulse on how the players feel more so than what we get to see from the outside looking in. And I feel like with after the Ty Dunn article, the series of articles that he put out, um, they're trying to rally around Sean McDermott. And I feel like what we've seen is this Bills team really say, Sean McDermott is our guy, forget what everybody else says. We're going to rally around him and we're going to win. Is that the sense? Is that the feeling that you're picking up around one Bills drive? Or is it just that they understand that this time of year they have to do what they got to do? I think it's a little combination of both. You know what I mean? Um, the, what 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 Tyler did, Doon did, I think was kind of personal. I, I think it was jive unfair for coach. Like, right. he, he, like we we treat but yeah, like we treat McDermott like like they the Panthers or something. Like they three and ten. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you know, sure. we we treating them like they they three and ten. Let's let's talk about a guy who changed the culture now. Whether you like what he's doing right now or not. He changed the culture. He ended a 17-year drought. He made this team a contender every year. All right? So what was in the article? I can agree to some of those things in the article. is true. Yeah. But in the, the way how it was displayed, 
I don't respect that. You know what I mean? But good thing that it that maybe it was something that this Bills team needed. You know what I mean? They needed something to rally for. You know what I'm saying? And hell, most of those guys been with Coach McDermott for five, six years, bro, and they've been winning. So they're not about to turn their back on that man because of whatever's going on right yep. now. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, yeah, that's the ultimate excuse. Maybe that's maybe that's the damn what you call it, the Cleveland Indian moment when they ripped off the clothing of the lady and just win the whole goddamn thing. You know what I mean? And they just they and they they just balling right now. You know what I'm saying? Now if they go out here and destroy the Chargers, now they put a lot of ammo. You know, on the team yesterday, asking the questions about this is a track game. How do you prepare for a track game? Josh, y'all ninth in the AFC, but y'all fifth in the power rankings. I'm still okay figure that shit out. But, Man. yeah, how humbling is it to know that as good as you are, this is where you are, and right. how hungry are y'all asses to get back to where y'all belong? You know what I mean? Let's keep this thing going. And, let's, you know, because Jordan Phillips did once say, we – Play down to the level of our competition. The Bills cannot have an ultimate letdown Saturday. They cannot have that, or the season is over. The season is over. And then it, it, you know, again, it goes back to making what happened in in, in Dune's report true. You know what I'm saying? So, right. yeah, you know, everybody's yeah. playing I for mean, their playoffs life right now. Everybody's playing for, for their playoffs lives. Right. For them to let go of the coach and not to have their starting quarterback. For for us to go into that and not. Like I said earlier, not have at least a double digit win. That is, I mean, I don't care if it's a one point win in the end. I don't care, but it should be a double digit victory um, in, you know, in LA. And if not, then it's, we, you know, we got, we got into the trap game um, and that's what it is. So I hope that we go into that knowing that it's that one game at a time mentality. I've been saying it for years, Mookie, we played down to our opponents. I hope that we don't do that this week. I mean, it's the season. It really is the season. I have a quick question. So Daquan Jones came back today in practice, and we, we saw some videos tweeted out uh, from the media open portion of practice. So from – right. It, 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 I'm sorry? He was pissed. <laughs> oh, he was pissed that it was tweeted out? I mean – McDermott yeah. was or, or who was pissed? No, DQ. Well, go ahead and just DQ. talk about that. DQ like, was... Go ahead and talk about it. I mean, you know – what is there to talk about? I mean, McDermott said, yeah, he's, he's back. And then, you know, everybody want to talk to him about it. He can't really answer. He can't, can't answer. He can't answer. He can't answer questions. The answers he don't know right now. He didn't even practice yet. You know what I mean? So, you know, I already knew uh, so, three. I, I knew I caught him in the locker room like down there a month ago. So you the video I mean? was a little premature. No, no, no. The media was accurate. He went out and said what he said. He just didn't really want to go out there and say it, but he a trooper. <laughs> it's nothing to give you right now. He back, he's playing, which is a good thing. Um, you know, right, right, right on time. Um, but yeah. yeah, it's good to have DQ uh, back in the in the sauce, so to speak. Okay. Okay. What else can he give us? Yeah, what else can he give us? Are there, are there any updates on on our cornerback situation? We have a, a, a former first round cornerback that uh, was kind of sent to IR on a. It was it was unknown in a way. It was kind of like, yo, where did this come from? And then it comes to find out that he actually Kyrie Elam actually had a foot injury. Um, so it wasn't out of anywhere, but it kind of, I guess, just wasn't reported properly, first of all. So that's a whole different conversation. But um, let's talk about this. Our cornerback coming back from injury, his window is has it open. When is it opening? When can we expect to see him? Should we expect to see him for the playoffs? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, right now, I mean, the back end isn't really an issue. Um, Kai Elam right now is a good quality depth piece in the event if somebody gets injured right now. I'll just be happy. I'm just being honest. Uh, he did have the injury. Um, you know, make no mistake about that. Um, I guess that's kind of explain how he wasn't able to drive off, you know, his foot during that Jacksonville game where he just so utterly was to blame. But if that was the case of them knowing that he had that injury, you shouldn't let him out to dry like that, you know, to be, you know, quite honest. You know what I mean? So, but So Mookie, I have to ask you, in your opinion, uh the twenty one day window's been open for a couple of guys that's expiring soon and now Daquan. Um who do we who do we take off this this roster in order to make room for some of these guys if you know healthy enough to come back? 
Or do you think like shorter, shorter, uh, Elam, are they, their season's going to be ended? Nah, I don't think, I mean, if anybody, uh, it'd probably be Daquan Jones for sure. So that's going to probably bump one of those D tackles down. Um, you know, maybe bump Kingsley Jonathan, um, back, you know, down to the practice squad and activate, uh, DQ, um, you know, maybe Leonard Fournette in the coming weeks. Uh, but other than that, if, if it ain't, you know, with a, dealt with an injury, then you're not going to see anybody on the practice. But technically, board. we don't need to elevate Lenny to the 53. We can just uh, he has the three practice squad elevations and then the it resets for the, the playoffs. So I'm not really worried about about him getting bumped up. It's more shorter. Uh, Elam, are they do you think they'll be on season ending IR because we won't be able to we don't want to. Yeah, anything? I think right now, I think right now. Yeah, because. What could what could Shorter give you right now, week 14, you know, in the midst of a playoff run being a rookie? He has no idea <laughs> right. what he's getting himself into. Uh, you know, Josh still is trying to develop trust with Dalton Kincaid and others. So I, right now, everything yeah. is at a standstill with this team. You know, he's, he's going with the guys that's out there, um, you know, that's, 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 that's flowing, that, that's developing that continuity. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, you know, you got to you got to ride out with that, especially when your back is against the wall. You're going to need all your veteran experience and leadership to get you through this right now. Right. So bringing in somebody to rock the boat. Eh. Well, I agree. But a lot of people were saying, well, you know, why activate them off, you know, for their 21 day window? I said you do that so they can practice with the team and get no, some reps in that way. The- if the Bills lose to Kansas City, you probably would have saw shorter. You probably would have saw Elon to start taking a look at some of these other guys that's on the roster, you know, Man, things know. like that. But Lenny. right now, they, they're not going to do that right now. So you you that's said uh, what, what what is uh, shorter? He doesn't need to be on the fifty three man. He can come up. He can be elevated for the last three the last three weeks, yeah, and then he can go into the playoffs. It all resets. I would I would love to see Leonard Fournette before the playoffs start and what he looks mm-hmm. like. I mean, you know, yeah. we spoke on Tuesday, and you know he was frustrated. You know, he feel that you know what he's doing, he could do that at home and you know be you know with his with his daughters. But I was like, yo, bro, you playoffs lady, man. You know, you time ain't right lady. now. It ain't your time right now. I hate, yeah. playoffs lady, man. I hate to be I, the, I, I hate to be that guy, but you said what is shorter gonna do, you know, if he comes up or if he comes in and plays. You know, you talk about a guy with a ninety seven percent catch rate in college on a team that potentially not potentially but has a fifteen to twenty percent drop rate and your number two wide receiver is dropping balls left and right. So, so, so you're talking about a guy cut? a guy that can catch a football. Who are yeah, we gonna you cut? Who do, we have wait, who, who Wait, wait, Devil's advocate. Wait, can, Devil's advocate. Can we wait? Can we clarify who is dropping those passes? Right. Who is that that's dropping those passes? <laughs> Mr. Davis. Who we talking about? Weeks. I don't know who. All right. Who but my point about. is, is that in order to bring anybody up, whether it's DQ, whether it's shorter, whether it's Elam, in order to bring anybody up to the fifty-three man roster and activate them moving forward, we have to cut people. We have fifty-three men on the roster currently. So who do we cut? in order to bring them up. And I don't think you, you do that with anybody right now, except for Daquan. Obviously, when Daquan's ready, we make room for him. It'll be interesting to, for me to see if they cut Latavius to keep, to sign Ty Johnson onto the 53-man. Um, he already is. I Ty's thought he was on the practice one. Did he well, just sign no. his reason? No, he signed um, when da- uh, Damian went down. They brought him up to the 53-man. He's uh, on the 53 Paul, Paul is dead right. You're you're cutting guys that aren't going to get scooped. Latavius Murray isn't getting scooped, right? Yeah. So, you're, so you're cutting guys that are getting scooped that aren't getting scooped just, by somebody else. I just want to know about Gabe for next season. Like, what are we doing for Gabe? Like, <laughs> well, he had, a 50, he had a 50 he had a 50 he had a 50 percent drop right last year. And he's going to be getting 1500 on the Chiefs next week next year if he doesn't. If he right. catches the football, Yo, him and if him and McDermott, him and McDermott are going to have a podcast talking about you, Spence. Yo, do it. <laughs> yeah, I would love for them to talk yeah. about me. Because I ain't shit. And and if they gonna sit there and talk about me, that means I made it. Because I'm and little dirty. And little dirty. He's uh yeah, he yeah. needs a job. He it'd be, needs a yeah, job, it'd be a little so. dirty. It'd be a little dirty. Gabe Davis and Sean McDermott. The thing is, I love Sean. Mc... You know what? I can't even say I love all three of them. I just recognize when I feel like guys don't serve the purpose that I feel like they need to serve that the team that they brought the reason that they brought them in for. Lil Dirty wasn't the guy after. Now, he he was at first. At first. 
there was a couple years there where, where Dabo used him properly in that offense where it was like Lil Dirty was a weapon. Mm-hmm. Now he getting cut off teams for I don't even know. Like, I don't, I'm hearing. Key word. I don't. I don't even want to say word. what the rumor is. Oh, I'm hearing. Keyword Dabo. Oh. Keyword Dabo. McKenzie right. got his extension because Dabo knew okay. how to use McKenzie. McKenzie just what he was. He was a gadget player that could you know have some you know. And I ain't mad at that. Specialist. But Who it was that? he was it was a scheme. Dorsey was more concepts than scheme. That's why it was easy. That's why it was so predictable for defenses against them. Teams stopped playing against Josh Allen. Teams were were, were playing against was playing against Dorsey. You know what I mean? And, and it was just mm. easy. You know what I mean? Mm. So that's that, that's the big difference. It was more concepts than scheme. That's why you know you didn't see Stephon Diggs getting open. And that's where so, I want to see I want to see that with Brady because you got to scheme him open no matter what's going on in his offense. And how you're using Stephon Diggs right now is not is not conducive to you know well, Mookie, what's going on. But let you're me winning. ask you this. Well, let me ask you this: is that is that why you see Josh Allen still have the statistics of an MVP candidate early in the season, but not the wins for the Buffalo Bills as a team? Is it, it like to you when you when you look at the reason why the wins weren't adding up the same way that the stats for Josh and everything that we talked about? Like you know, everybody in Buffalo that that looks at the, the, the t- all twenty two, Josh is still playing at an all MVP level. Uh, Bruce Nolan drops his stew. Josh is still top three, top four in the stew. You talk about cover one, they still talk about Josh Allen being an MVP type player. So when you look at all of these different things, we don't have the wins early on. Do you equate it to it being Josh not you you get what I'm asking you? Like is it is it about Josh not putting it together or is it about really that the scheme wasn't condu- like Josh is still the MVP guy. He's all he's he's all pro. It but wasn't a scheme, scheme though. It, it just wasn't concept. a scheme. It just it was never a scheme. It was our concepts. When you try to take Josh Allen, one of his best attributes of his game away, you make him a pocket passer, you know, and then when you, you don't throw over the middle, you throw just quick outs and verts, you know, teams, it's easy for the scheme. The, the Bills' bread and butter play under Dorsey was a scramble drill. A scramble drill, not a well executed play. Not like Diggs were running wide open and he's diming, like you know, not a well executed play. It was, it was all yeah, a scramble drill. Josh, like they say, putting on the cape. So at times when Josh put that cape on, Dorsey put Josh in bad situations to make bad decisions. You know, what I mean, again, you know, Dable protected Josh from himself. That's why you never saw Josh throw an interception inside the red zone until Dorsey took over. Now, all of a sudden, he has this Boom. problem that he's a turnover machine. Boom. Yeah, under Dorsey. It wasn't under Dable that he was doing this stuff. In this short period of time, Josh Boom. Allen was was, was labeled Wait as a, a turnover machine Boom. because of Wait the Dorsey. No, decision. Mookie. Mm-hmm. I just got to be honest with you. You know I love you. You my dog. You already know. But let's be honest about it. Josh Allen has led the league in turnovers since he's come into the league. It's not just since. It's a combination. But, but, but under, but, well, no, but, but under Dorsey. Oh, and, oh been, just red zone. Okay. If I missed the word red zone. Okay, no. If I missed the word red zone, I'm sorry. Yeah, but it stuck out in the he's red zone. He's actually the most protected in. in the red zone. Um, no, in the red never zone, threw one in he was most years, protected. Though. No, never I, no you're, you're right. No, first five years inside the red zone. The he did miss that yeah. word. No, you're playoffs. right. You're right. He did once no, in but, the playoffs, but it didn't count because it's playoffs. No, but either way, I was wrong. I missed the word playoffs. If if I didn't hear that at first, because at first I'm like, wait a minute, Josh wasn't even in, you know, like for me, it was just overall, he was a turnover machine. He fumbled mm-hmm. way too much. He he threw too many turnovers. And that's me being a bill. I love every week we lose, we lose by, we could lose by 40. And I'm going to say, Josh, I love you. We lo- we win by 20. Josh, I love you. Mm-hmm. But he turns the ball over, man. And now this season, I don't feel like it's as much on Josh as it is on everybody else. I think there's been a lot of things that's gone through receivers' hands. I think there's been a lot of things that's that's happened to where Josh has gotten the blame for after week one. He's gotten the blame for a lot of stuff that he didn't do. Oh, he, he's but throwing you the give ball, Josh so he is doing it. He's throwing the footballs. Nobody else is throwing the ball. Bro. Yeah, but so I'm just saying if I put it, it. if. He is I'm just saying, it. if I put it right in your hands, man. If I, if I, and, and, and you he coach on several make levels, make no mistake about it. He's still doing. Make no the mistake. Ball is you're, in right. His hands. He's you're right. You're right. Because I, you're right. Because I. All pro Poe is really quiet right. when 
He still do <laughs> right. it. So Cause you're right. Have, no, he has to have you're some right. accountability there. You know what I mean? No, you're right, because I wouldn't throw to Gabe Davis. Put in. Yeah. I wouldn't Davis do it. Davis been wide open six times for touchdowns in the last three weeks. And you know why he's been a wide open? Because he's been dropping when he's been given he opportunities. He hasn't dropped one touchdown catch all year. Well, not one touchdown catch. He's been wide open for six touchdowns in the last three weeks. In the this offseason. overtime, right? This ain't going on a podcast. He hasn't thrown it to him. No, Wait, I was gonna it? up. I was gonna upload it as a sep- second. Oh podcast. well, I'm not gonna say what I was gonna say. Joe got right. to okay. him open I'm gonna text you. You know, I'm gonna text you what I was gonna say. Be real. You be know real, what I think? You know what I'm no, I'm, I I can't say that. I'm getting canceled he's, if I say he's that. So, he's so <laughs> prone. He's so prone to seeing cover two shell and and and, cl- and clown and all that. He don't think nobody's open deep. Right. He think the safety is over. You know, what I mean, he don't want to make that mistake that way. You know, what when I mean? it gets so, to the playoffs, he'll start seeing it. Yeah, so that, he's hit. making those mysteries like how he missed Gabe. You know, on that one play when they talk about Gabe broke to the corner, Gabe always broke to the corner on that. Exactly. He never stayed. Uh, like uh, Kansas City game, he broke to the inside. Because no. he gave him an outside leverage. No, 13 seconds, he broke to the inside. Because he gave him an outside leverage. Was no, 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 that, was, that was a play. That was a double move. And that was under Dable. That was a double move. So 100%. that's a, it's down how hey. we go. It's going to create hey, can separation. these guys come on every week? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> hey. I like- I like we that. can make this happen. I like it. I like it. We can make this happen. I I like this. to have six or five other people to argue with, not just Jerry. <laughs> well, no, I just think it's still the same format. It's just it's five people <laughs> arguing with Spence. I mean, it's the same thing. <laughs> I'm always wrong. And here's the thing: I don't mind being wrong because I understand. Like I'm a I'm a fan of the sport, and I love the fact that like I get I get a chance to talk to somebody whose brother plays the game at the highest level. I love the fact that I get to talk to Mookie, who covers the game at the highest level. I love the fact that I get to talk to Jerry, who played at the highest level. But for me, when I watch, man, the eye test tells me when Jerry played, he was good when he played every position he played. That's what the eye test tells yeah. me. I think I, I think it's important. You know what I'm saying? I think, I think it's Wait, important. hold on, Joe. Wait, don't cut me off before my point is done, man. What are you doing? Joe, he's, Joe, he's kissing my ass. Let him go. Keep him going. Yeah. That was right. Like, let me build guys up to shoot him down. That's what I'm doing here. So, no, but no, I'll be quick. I'll be real quick. I'll be real quick. What I'm saying is, though, it's like when, when – you know, you watch these games, and, and for me, the eye test comes when I talk about the Bills every week, and I tweet when I'm wilding out on Sundays and I'm just being crazy. This is not me, like, really trying to be an analyst. It's just me being a fan, and I tweet my thoughts out. The thing is, the eye test tells me every week when, when Aubro Poe tells me, Spence, you got to relax on Gabe. Okay, but why – not last week. I joked last week, but why does Gabe disappear in big games? I'm talking about games against the Bengals. I'm talking about games against the Eagles. He had zero receptions in two of the biggest games against two of the biggest opponents. Okay, okay, the Eagles. I'm talking about the Chiefs. Sorry, I meant the Chiefs. I'm sorry. I meant the defending Super Bowl champions, not the the guys that lost. I'm sorry. Do you know why? Do you know why? They have him blocking defensive ends while tight ends are out. I can't hear that. Can I, can I can't I hear that. that. They have him no. blocking defensive ends. Bro. Tight ends are going out for passes. Are you listening <laughs> to what I'm saying? Better yeah. him than Khalil I'm Shakir. listening to you. Number two <laughs> wide receiver. Better him than Khalil yeah, Shakir. They are blocking Khalil <laughs> I'm listening to you. While but when Khalil Kincaid Shakir is running an out route. Can no, I respond listen. to that just for a second? Can I respond to you? Go ahead, bro, Poe. Because I'm going to get both test, of y'all. I'm going to get both the, of y'all. The eye test in itself is similar to the PFF grades for me. It's it's it, You can see it, and it shows you a little bit of the story, but it doesn't tell you everything. God. And if you, if you look at the way Gabe plays and everything they okay. ask him to do, and the reason I know that is because I know how much they ask Jordan to do. And when the PFF grades tell okay, me that's fair. That's fair. has a 50 PFF, that's but they fair. ask him to come from the post and play the A-gap on defense, that shit pisses me off when this shit pisses <laughs> me off. You know what I mean? So like, that's I know that's what he does for the team, and I know. And he doesn't <laughs> let me, let me log out. Ever. Let me log no, out. That's fair. Let me. I think I think you're 100% true. Uh, Spence is gone. Uh, I, think you're, I think it's 100% true what you just said, but I think it's also important to be okay with the fact that some players are limited. These guys are all professional football players. Mm-hmm. And, and for Bills fans, and it's probably not just Bills fans, Bills Mafia, it's all fan bases. For some reason, we have to die on this hill of this guy's a superstar and this guy is, sorry, Jerry, trash, right? Like there's no in between. And it's okay to say that when, when, when Gabe Davis was on this football team with John Brown, 
with Emmanuel Sanders. He thrived in the number three role because of who he had to face and what he had to do and what he was being asked to do. As a number two, there's nothing wrong with saying, Gabe Davis, we love you. You're great, but you're not a number two. I don't know why. I don't but know that's why. That's what we've been saying. I mean, that's thing. literally what we've why been saying for the last two years. The so definition why? of number two is crazy to me, though. The definition no, well, why is of number two receiver is crazy to me. Because now, like, you have Cooks coming in who kind of has your number two reps. Kincaid can get you some number two reps in the game. You got Gabe who can have a number two game. So, like, the definition of number two receiver, you have your main guy, and then you have everyone else. And as long as yeah, everyone dude. else is giving you production, it doesn't matter what the number two does. As long as he's there solidifying, like, Gabe blocks. Like, that. That if you if they ask their number two to block, like, Gabe blocks, and that's what he's asked to do, then his numbers don't aren't relevant as long as everybody else is getting off to me. When it comes so to the number, the number two moniker – the number two moniker is something that fans came up with, especially when you got a dude like Diggs. Uh, I, think, Diggs I, think is, a letter, I think there's a letter position for I, 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 I would say, really like, there's a reason. A letter why position? X, Y, Z, H, F? Like, the, X is, a, the X is wide receiver. No, what, right? what the hell does that have Jerry. to do with Jerry. I, think, I think there's a difference between whether or not uh, people say wide the, receiver. Uh, I mean, there's a first oh, option, man. there's a second option. So when we Do you know how the second option is? You know the first option is the guy that's open. The second option is the other guy that's open. That's who. That's who. My the point is, is that when you See, look at no. Kansas City, okay. when you look at Kansas City, their their first option is Kelsey. Period. So I think that that what we need is a right. consistent second option. Let's stop talking and, uh, about wide receiver. Right. Two. No. Let's you know what, Sarah? I want you to and be the head coach OC for that team because I will D you no, up every Jerry. time. Because if I only got to worry about that you. dude first, She's I know I got to go with that Jerry. guy second. No, I'm literally agreeing Jerry. with you, Jerry. But okay. <laughs> are you what you're doing me? is yeah. I'm sorry. we all are we all are agreeing this with you. In my ear. I apologize. We, no. But see, the thing is, we're I'm agreeing with you. We're all agreeing with you. But what we're saying is, I think that you're missing, like for me, you're missing the one point that I'm trying to make is like, look, it's Diggs. We get it. Kelsey is for the Chiefs. After Kelsey is everybody else. We get it. But when you're going to, as the team, I'm not talking about me. I didn't say Gabe was wide receiver two. I didn't say Gabe was wide receiver one B. I didn't do that. Josh Allen did. No, Steph did. Sean McDermott did. No, but what I'm saying is when you go out and you advertise a cat to go out there and be to be somebody that's just like Stefan Diggs, then you have a, ba a fan base that expects this that. guy to be Josh Allen did that. He, he said one B, but th th what they asked no, him to do. No, wait, wait, wait. So let me finish my point. Let me finish my point. So when you have a guy, your starting quarterback and head coach, come out and say that this guy is supposed to be just a step below Stefan Diggs, then you have a whole fan base that's looking for him to give you what he gave you in 13 seconds. So when do the expect, it. but when the expectation is there, and then it doesn't come out in game film, it doesn't come out week after week. Don't get mad at the fans for saying where the where the hell is this dude. Get mad at the guys that said expect this performance from this guy. Did I? Say I came into this. No, no, no. I'm, I'm talking from a fan. He's, no, y'all yeah. pl played, your brother played, you played, all y'all played, you coached, you, I get it. I, I didn't. I'm a fan. I'm telling you, as a fan, when my quarterback and my head coach tells me that my second wide receiver is just as good as my first wide receiver, the expectation is for this guy to not drop more passes than everybody else on the roster. First, so now y'all want to give no, football. bro. You know about uh, bro, you're not just a fan. You know about no, hold on, hold on. You yeah, know don't, about football. Don't, don't, don't go that route. Exactly. Let's Come on, man. Let me be a fan. Second, God no, no. damn it. Let second, me be a fan. Second, the the way they talk about it is about importance. How how important they are to the team. When they say he's just like a wide receiver, he could be a wide receiver, wrong. A, B, one, B, whatever. They they speak on importance. Gabe's importance to this team is is something yes. fans don't see. And regular fans, I'm not talking about you, fans. You should be able to see this. So I get frustrated. I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't you see, see, it. Is <laughs> I don't see <laughs> it. The best thing that was said tonight was by Poe when he said he talked about what Gabe does that nobody understands and what his brother does that nobody understands. Every side of the ball has dudes like that. There's only so many superstars on a team. If you have too many superstars, a la when they tried to make the all-star team in Washington and that whole thing blew up, it don't work. 
you got a couple of superstars and you got dogs, dudes that'll do stuff that other people won't do. That's the stuff that Gabe does. And if you subtract him from the equation, watch watch what happens. And also we bitch and our wide receivers don't block, our wide receivers don't do this. I'm not saying he's an amazing pass catcher. What I'm saying is, is that he does more. His his value to the team is more than just if he That's catches fair. the ball or not. That's it's fair. The same thing, and it's the same thing with 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 Jordan. Find me a safety that will come downhill and play a gap on a regular okay. basis. They every, ain't many of them, every, and if they are, they're, freak, they're, they're they're unicorns, man. They're yeah, unicorns. You want me over? And that's every, the that's the deal to me is there's dirty work guys on on all teams that probably get more want, shit than they can get. No, my, you want my me thing over. is this, and my thing is this: if you, if y'all saying that he's receiver number two, fucking treat him like he's receiver number two. How about scheming him open? How about? Opening up the route tree yeah. from him instead over. of being so predictable and just have a home run, nothing but hitches and verts all the damn time. I, the man had the best training camp out of anybody this year. The hmm. best consistent hmm. training camp. That's what I said. He's never that translated way to camp. never translated hmm. to the field. Why is that? Because That's your offensive coordinator didn't get him involved, didn't get him enough reps. Maybe that do account to test to some drops. Were you not repping things out constantly? It calls for drops and things of that nature because it's not out. It's not routine. We have a new coordinator, and I feel like I feel like Brady's involving him even less. So does he have even? Does he have even? Mm. You know, less. Well, he's he he spreads. He he, well, you got a lot of damn weapons. Mm. So the one thing I look at it is that. It's no, like, he's using him to block. He's, he's, he's shuffling actually the said deck. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know who is going to be. You don't know who is going to be each week right now. You can't catch. Other than, only only thing you know that it is going to be this week every week is James Cook. I'm bucking all bro po because no all bro po and I usually <laughs> agree on a whole bunch of stuff, be, and this is the one thing we ain't James agreeing Cook. on. Because it's Sarah said he doesn't get open, system. and that is be no. I, th- but he he's not a great. Up. He's not a great route runner. He's I mean, not he's a, a great route runner. But, the, but Joe has done a good job of scheming okay. him open. Yes, and, and Josh is missing him for My, touchdowns. Okay. Okay, my point See, is... that's another thing we agree okay, on, that 17... Made, go ahead, made, go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, you guys made a point earlier that when, um, in 2020, 2021, when we had a Smoke on the team, when we had Sanders on the team, or, you know, like, when we had Beasley on the team, he was better at that wide receiver three, third option. Let's, let's change the way I'm saying it. He was the third <laughs> or fourth option at wide receiver. He couldn't go against... The their you know fourth best uh, DB on the other team. He was always getting open because of the position he was coming and playing. I don't think he needs to be going up against this the first and second best DBs on the the opposite the opposing team. So when we're talking about wide receiver one, wide receiver two, that is what we're talking about. He's going consistently up against the the second best you know dbs on the other teams and he's not getting he's not winning those matches most of the time he's not right i think if we had another wide receiver in this uh, you know on this team to put him back in wide receiver three wide receiver four type of spot he would excel again i have no doubt about that but he's not going to get that kind of money on the bills i and that's it aside aside from his drop rate which, and I'm just going to say it, the Bills went out this year and drafted the best catching tight end in college football, one of the best catching wide receivers in college football, and went and bolstered the roster with other good pass catching receivers because of the drop rates that the, the receiver group that they had were getting. Aside from that, the reality is, is last year at this time, and actually before this time, we all knew what was wrong with the offense. Guys like Mookie was saying it. Guys like Jerry was saying it. The problem with the offense is they're bracketing Stephon Diggs and they're putting the best corner on Gabe Davis, and it's shutting the offense down. And everybody agreed. So now here we are a year later, and everybody's like, oh, the problem is that the Gabe Davis, the problem is, is he's open and Josh is just No, I didn't, I didn't say That's Gabe. Funny. I did not say – I've never said that Gabe – doesn't have his issues. What I said was he does a lot of stuff that no other wide receivers will do. But Fair. the other thing is this, and and I think I think Poe made a point, and we're on the same wavelength with a lot of stuff, which I like. But I think mm-hmm. seventeen, I think yeah, seventeen you. gets, and I've said this a million times, and I get blistered for it. Seventeen gets way too much credit and not enough blame. Um, he makes a, you know, he makes his fair share of mistakes too. 
mm-hmm. and we tend to, to gloss over I that. Just, so, to, uh, Jerry, you know. To, hold on. Josh, to, though, Josh on gets that. more hate than everybody, man, on his yeah, Bills roster. Not, oh, yeah. not, not for me, no. dude. But I want to say, man, like, on what Jerry no, said, I get on. the perspective that locally that Bills fans might love him, but Josh Allen gets more hate than anybody. Josh yeah. Allen throws a pass yeah. to Gabe David and it bounces off his hands and it gets intercepted. And they talk about how Josh Allen is turnover prone and how he throws turnover worthy plays more than any other cornerback in the league. It's like, more, I don't understand how we're sitting here saying that. More about, that more about the Bills, it's more about the Bills defense giving up 30 points to the Eagles in the second half. And all of them, but, but, but Josh, they talk about Josh. Interception. Josh, yeah. interception. For people that think that, that Josh has zero hate, that, that's ridiculous. That's he is no talks about hate. All they do is talk about Josh. That's all they do is talk about Josh. We went out and got past catchers, like Joe said. We got Don Kincaid. We got some guys that can pass catch. That's what he talked about. Don Kincaid has four big drops in games this year, and that's more than, than games drops this year. So, like, maybe Isn't Josh that? just throws bullets, and that's why we have the biggest drop rates – in, in football historically, we don't we don't he does ever throw a hard ball to catch. Josh's balls in this cold ass weather every year, where we're like, okay, well maybe it's not just the receiver, maybe Jeremiah, it's everybody. Jeremiah Diggs has dropped a lot of balls this year too. The Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen played a perfect football game in the playoffs in minus seven degree weather minus and got for like three hundred and fifty yards. Well, that one game to, doesn't, yeah, that doesn't mean. On, hold on, you're comparing one game to a game against a good a good it defense. Where they're playing, man, making throw, you fit it, it invalidates the idea that he throws the ball too hard in the cold. See, yeah. Matt Bynum, Matt yeah. Bynum gets it. Matt yeah. Bynum gets it. He, he has not. I have, oh, Matt is weird. I love somebody him. tell no, me, Matt is Mookie. Weird. Mookie Mookie Matt doesn't fans. get it because I'm going to disagree with three of his go. comments. Go I'm going to just say no, because right now, no, I'm going to tell you how weird Matt is. Right now, Matt will come out and he'll put in the comments something that like we miss EJ Manuel for for calling like when he wants to do the the false start calls. Like that's what Matt will post right now, and I love Matt. He's our editor in chief, and. Our, Love me, Buffalo Rumble. Shout out to Buffalo Rumble. Getting back Rumbles. to the, the speed of the but, pass, yeah. I have not seen Josh Allen throw an unreasonable bullet at a receiver in weeks. It's been he a just, long time. He can, he when he does it, I'm the first person that's on Twitter going, "Why would you throw the ball that hard for no re-? like?" There, he reason, would do it once again. The ball, but I'm saying you're gonna have higher drop. You're gonna have higher drop rates when Josh throws as hard as he does. What I learned from the night is, and and I gotta go, guys. We're on two hours. All right, man. What I learned from the night is, don't don't let Spence saying he loves you mistake. Don't mistake that for he loves you. There's a good chance that he hates your damn guts, but he's going to yeah. tell you that he loves you. Yeah, I had to know. You know what? No, I, I give Matt so much love on a regular. I'd never take a jab. I had to get him this one time. I literally just text him. I love you, man. Like I, I had to joke with you this one time. I never get Matt. I never do. Hey. That's guys, good. thanks, Mookie. Thanks for coming on, Poe. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. I Love appreciate you. you guys. Yeah, guys, I got a pack, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get this going too. I got a pack for. I leave at, at seven, so I gotta be out of here. What is this? Fifty six for you? Fifty seven for you? No, fifty eight. Fifty eight. Fifty eight. Don't forget to outfit again. I won't. Sure. Big dubs. <laughs> Big dubs. I won't. All bro Poe yelled at me. He's like, Where, "Where's your picture? You haven't posted it." I was like, "I just posted it." <laughs> so. If I don't we'll post it, we lose. So it's it's gonna it's gonna happen. So. <laughs> Love you guys. Merry Christmas. I gotta go be a right. villain. Merry Christmas, guys. I, go go Bills. Bills. I gotta be a villain. Go Bills. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for stopping in, Mookie. Thank you. Bye.